What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I am your host, Nick, joined by the household. We got our sweet boy, Justin. We have Allie. We have Leia. How's everyone doing? Pretty good. It's Valentine's Day. It is. We are recording this on Valentine's Day. Yep. Wearing pink. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I just had a lovely photo shoot with... Uh, we had River's first photo shoot, so she was basically a model now. I saw that. You know, those little, like, the little nude baby, like, in the palm of your hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a so. big sucker for those. Yeah. I almost cried a couple times. Is she tiny right now? Because she's, you said palm in your hands. She has to be bigger, uh, right? Well, she's bigger than the palm of my hands, but yeah, she's still pretty tiny. Yeah. She's also just, like, an incredibly well-behaved baby. It's amazing. She's, like, not only gorgeous, but incredibly well behaved is she well behaved or is there nothing she can do to make you mad no she actually is objectively well behaved okay. so far like well, there you go. again don't want to give anything too much away we got mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. we We're got nally night's birth story next thursday on going deeper a little preview for that we do have another bachelor episode we have to cover so we'll do that obviously in this intro uh we got jay wow is our special guest today super excited to have mm-hmm. jay wow aka also known as jenny <laughs> uh i wish i had a nickname like jay wow it was one of the cool nickname. We'll make you one. Lunches was a nickname of mine in high school. Well, that explain, wasn't very cool. Explain it. When I was in high school, senior year, you get to, you know, you can, you don't really have to go to all your, you know, you can kind of leave school sometimes or you leave for lunch. And me and my friends would go to our respective houses and then we'd go to my house for lunch and kind of, you know, eat out of the cabinets. And then we'd always have juice boxes for the little ones. My brother Luke at the time was a very sweet boy. Always, I mean, he's still a sweet boy. But uh, we would eat, we would drink the juice boxes, and and my brother Luke would go, Nikki, those are for our lunches. Aww. So then my friends started calling me Nikki lunches, and then that turned into lunches. I like it. Other than that, yeah, that's not a great nickname. No, it mine's is worse. a nickname. My husband calls me Large. Large. Because mm, those are my initials. <laughs> those are my initials. Hmm. It's cute. Yeah. It's cute. A- it's not cute. What are your initials? L like- R G. Okay. He's buying some vowels. He's definitely he's, buying he's, some vowels. It's a stretch. It's yeah. a stretch. I hate it. <laughs> well, what's what's his nickname? Um, Dumpling? Slim Dan. Slim Dan. Yeah. Well, oh, that's wow. his artist name, so it's also his nickname. Oh, it's his artist name. Yeah. Slim Dan. Slim Dan. It's a cute one, yeah. And he calls you large. And he calls me large. I got the I got the worst. Large and Slim Dan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? I have never thought about that before, right now. That just dawned on you? Well, you just said it, and yeah. <laughs> Sitting in a tree. All right, before I get to Bachelor, what else we got? Uh, let's see. Uh, we forgot to mention this uh, on Reality Recap. Over Super Bowl weekend, Brittany Mahomes uh, given Jackson Mahomes the uh, the Heisman, so to speak, the stiff arm, mm-hmm. the boot. And who was Brittany with, by the way? She seemed didn't, I, we didn't, I didn't really recognize. I mean, I'm sure she has plenty of friends I don't recognize, but she was at some club in Vegas at a table, popping bottles. She had her security detail. I don't know how regular her detail is. Maybe that security guy was even part of the club and not even her detail, but Jackson Mahomes came up in in the whole kind of classic, do you know who my brother is? And security turned him down and (laughs) kind of looked over to Brittany. It seemed so perfect that it was almost like a skit. Like the way she looked was just like, oops, sorry, like nothing I can do. I really look, quite loved it. It looked like it was choreographed. It did. She look looked at him and she mm. mm. and then, and then she did, immediately started dancing. went right back to dancing. But listen, if Brittany Mahomes can set a boundary with Jackson Mahomes, anyone can set a boundary with an in-law, and that's what it comes down to. Like sometimes we don't pick our in-laws. Well, in his perfect world, she would have been like, "Oh no, 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 we know him," and then pulled him in, right? Yeah. Well, but he, the book on Jackson Mahomes is that he is the stereotypical athlete sibling where they serve no real purpose in life other than being just the sibling of the famous person there's there doesn't seem to be any motivation for any personal like accomplishment Mm -hmm. they have no problem just being the brother of the athlete and a shitty one at that you know obviously his um, shenanigans have been well documented which have been anything from obnoxious to allegedly criminal and is he is he still dealing with that um sexual assault uh allegation or so he was arrested on three counts of aggravated sexual battery which is a class a felony and one count of battery in relation to an incident that took place at a kansas city restaurant in february of 2023 so, that happened on may 3rd of this year and that's when he was dealing with that account still in may so well, I say good for, I wonder if Brittany got the okay from Patrick 
It's like, hey, I'm friends with Taylor now. Can't associate. I can't associate with well, him. Well, and do you find it interesting that his denial from the VIP area came hours after reports that he was spotted socializing with Kayla Nicole, who's Travis Kelsey's ex. ex-girlfriend? He was socializing with her. Mm-hmm. Which happened first? The diss happened first? The diss happened no, after. No, there was reports that he was hanging out with Kayla. And then hours later, he w- he wasn't allowed in the VIP section. And you can watch him tell the bouncer, my brother is Patrick Mahomes. And that's when Brittany was like, oh, uh, and kept dancing. That was the best, uh, I don't know, ever. I, I mean, don't know. what a queen. <laughs> I, we are a Brittany Mahomes fan club at the in this household. And I strongly feel like she has been taking way too much shrapnel from uh, Jackson over the years. And congrats to her. Now she's uh, gracing uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit. Anyways, hats off to her. I'm glad that she's been able to get the green light from Patrick. Just being like, I can't deal with this shithead anymore. <laughs> Not it's, today. She looks good. I and mean, even shit like it, hanging out with Travis's ex. It's like, why? What, what a fucking clout chaser. Like, it's just like one bad decision after another. You know, family will always be your family. And you'll always love your family. You may not even like your family. But that doesn't mean you always have to include your family. Because even your family can be a liability. Especially from a public figure standpoint. And like, if your family is a social liability, then you have to set boundaries. And we always get, you know, we get calls all the time for mm-hmm. ask nick and it, it can be tough sometimes you got to do it and hats off to Brittany mahomes for that was the of all we waited so long for her to do this because i think all the conversations have been like why, like why are you putting up with this shit yeah and and the have it go down in this manner where she just is like i don't know it was and then immediately starts dancing before jackson even leaves is yeah she humbled him without kiss. saying anything that was, was a so powerful good. thing yeah. i really wonder what the i wonder if there was fallout after that yeah, you know. I wish they had panned back to him and, just to see, like, if he was like, what the fuck? I mean, I, Patrick and Jackson seem close, but I mean, if, if it were my sibling, I'd be like, dude, you are a liability. So grow up, start behaving, start acting like an adult, stop making bad decisions. Every decision you make, Jackson, is drama. It's just drama. And it's a shit I don't need. So, yeah, yeah. I just respect uh, respect for Brittany to doing that. We forgot to cover that on RR and I... Just wanted to give hats off to her. And then the New Heights came out. I was going to say. Uh, yes. Nick Adamas. Nick, 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 Nick Adamas. Nor, Nordadamas. What is it? Who's the guy who? Nordstradamus. The guy who predicts the future. Nordstradamus? Yeah. Nordstradamus. Is that what you're trying to yeah, say? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's Nick, Nick Adamas. Okay. Close. I was like, oh, you're Nick Adamas? <sighs> like, where are we going? <laughs> Anyways, it sounds like I kind of nailed it. Yeah. You did, yeah. <laughs> they could have just uh, inserted our audio. But that, that was the obvious move. I mean, I, you know. I I don't think I went really out on a limb there by predicting something that was, it would have been a stronger move if I predicted him being like, you know what? Fuck that, man. Like, I'm going to do me. And then he had he done that, that would have been a stronger prediction. But this was kind of an obvious one. This was. He had to. Yeah, he kind of had to. But But you called it nonetheless. Glad I did nail it. I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in their head. Basically, they watched the show. They they were like, oh, that's what we should do. Oh, you know, before we do our podcast, what, let's would, ask Nick. Let's ask Nick. Yeah. Let's ask. Let's ask Nick. Uh, and uh, I'm glad I could come through to uh, <laughs> for for Jason and Travis. So you're welcome, guys, and congratulations, Travis, on the Super Bowl and 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 love. I did see a headline that Travis was going to do her European dates with her, which I guess works out timing wise because if his season is over, he can kind of travel. Oh my god! With her. Yeah, now that they're now that his season's done, it's going to be very fun to watch this relationship unfold mm-hmm. in a different way because you know. Travis being a seasoned vet, uh, I think younger players will get into it, like, they'll take a couple weeks off, get into their off-season program, you know, really try to take the next leap in their development. Travis, I mean, he has cemented himself as arguably the greatest head of all time. He's resting his body, especially as older players, you know, as they get older, rest and relaxation is, is just as valuable, if not more, than more reps and more mm-hmm. practice and things like that. So he's going to definitely take some downtime. He's going to relax. He's going to party. Is there so, a lot of downtime between a Super Bowl and like the start of a season? Well, off-season programs in the NFL will start uh, maybe as early as like, I want to say March or April. They call them OTAs and then mini camps and things like that. Yeah. They start around March, April-ish. So there's not a yeah. ton of downtime. But he, ha- he has at least like two or three months to like tag along. But also like a lot of those what's called mini camps and OTAs are, they're not mandatory. Even though a lot of teams will have all their players, but players like Travis Kelsey, veterans like that, often miss those types of practices. Because they don't need it. They don't really yeah. need it, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it, I think it, I'm very much looking forward to seeing 
this relationship unfold now that Travis's season is done and you get to see Travis travel and, and kind of, it, you know, it seems like Tra- Taylor was very much on downtime, spending a lot of time in Kansas City when she wasn't working, you know? So it would be fun yeah, to see. So where- now she'll be, in, she'll be in Melbourne, then she has Sydney, then she goes to Singapore, but her last wow. Singapore date is March 9th, Man, and then really she doesn't pick up again in Paris until May 9th. So they when will she have like Spain? two months in the spring. Nan and I but- were talking about maybe trying to do the Spain one. Oh, yeah. Because you Spain haven't seen it, right? I'm not seen mm-hmm. there. No. Is Thursday, May 30th. Hmm. We'd have to bring Nally's mom. And the baby. Well, that, yeah. Well, yeah, to watch. To, Got to it. To help with the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. She's coming. Manali's mom's coming on her Wait. honeymoon. No. Yeah. Does that mean River's going on the honeymoon? Well, yeah. We're not leaving our baby. Wow. No. Nice. But her mom's coming to help so that Nally and I can have a, honeymoon. a long time. Yes. Yeah. An actual honeymoon. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. Oh, a, a breakup in Bravo World. We got L- Larsa and Marcus have called it quits. Mm-hmm. Um, Fresh off their appearance on Traders. Yeah. Do you think it was Traders that really did him dirty? Maybe he thinks she had something to do with him getting sent home. Do you think that what it was? It's like, no. you <laughs> sent me home. I know it was you. I think it was funny that everybody else thought that at the time. And she's like, why would I send home my boyfriend? Every public relationship has um, holes you could pick at and things like that. Certainly, Nally and I, you know, uh, we have our critics. A lot of people will be like, oh, that's not going to work out, you know, for all the reasons. But... That being said, it's not like Marcus J- Jordan dating Michael Jordan's former teammate, Scottie Pippen's ex-wife, was necessarily a uh, relationship that I think people would bet on. That had a lot of drama built into that relationship. I mean, even for, for that relationship even to unfold, to even to be considered, you, mm-hmm. you, you must love drama. You, you love a mess. She made this breakup very messy, too. Because we all know about this because of her Instagram story. Out of nowhere, she posted a story saying, the man you choose to be your partner affects everything in your life, your mental health, your peace of mind, your love inside you, your happiness, and how you get through tragedies. Your success, how your children will be raised, and much more. Choose wisely. Then she posted an Instagram poll and said, should your friends unfollow your ex? Yes or no? <laughs> so she's just like feeling the fire. She, she's definitely feeling it's the It's an fire. alleged breakup. It's not necessarily confirmed yet. Well, so Larsa, if you want to feel it on the vial files. Here's your seat. Her, where are we at with her and Marcus? We are waiting on reply. Okay. Larsa, answer. Answer my email. Uh, <laughs> she's messy, that's for sure. First come, first serve. Yeah. Larsa and Marcus. Do you think she would answer your DM if you just DM'd her? Possibly. Would you have voted yes or no to should your friends unfollow your ex? What's your thoughts? Should your friends unfollow your ex? Um, situational. I'm going to say, yeah, situational. Mm -hmm. Um, If something actually happened, yeah, maybe, potentially. It's just like, I, I, ne- I always like to take the high road in general because I just feel like it's kind of petty in nature. And I always, not in part, just, and just so you know, me oh, taking the high road isn't always me being the bigger person. It's not coming across as, as that I care. You know, it's, it's operating on, on the kind of plane of indifference. Mm-hmm. So making your friends unfollow your ex is the opposite of indifference. It's, you know, it's in the drama category. It's in the petty category. It's in, you know, so I would rather come across as, I'm going to fuck, do yeah. what you want. I'm unbothered by this. You know, it's like either a combination of that or like, I, you know, me and my, we're not, t- we're no longer together, but I wish them the best. It's just not for me. Yeah. I would rather have that energy. You know, that being said, if, if we broke up for a reason and my ex did some shit, it, there are times when I would want my friends to, to set a boundary, take a stand and, and, and let people know, uh, let let my ex know where I stand, or they stand, rather. So I think it's situational. Yeah, um, for sure. I would love to be in a situation not to care and not to request that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the opposite of love is indifference, not hate. Uh, there yeah. you go. I mean, speaking of drama, Bachelor, uh, part two. It's part two. God. How many, do we have to do a lot of these two a week? I hope not. I don't think so. I think they did this because of Valentine's Day, right? That and Maria and Sydney. Like, I feel like that was the drama that they wanted to, like, I don't know if flip it, that. But that right? some kind of programming. Because it is on next Monday. It's not like they had to have to skip next week or anything. I wonder if it's a bonus episode or, like, if we still have the same amount of episodes and they just did. I'm sure they, ha- I'm, I'm guessing the same amount of episodes. My guess it has something to do with maybe the back end of, like, scheduling. Mm, maybe, yeah. Who knows? Or they had so much content, they just had to like 
add an extra. I mean, not. I mean, Cal- Kelsey. I think she wins. I, I, I'm right now gonna say Kelsey, Kelsey's my uh, my horse. You've so liked her since day one. I've yeah. liked her since day one. Made me cry this episode. Oh. But talking about her mom mm-hmm. and like that that was that was a story. You know, it was meaningful and to hear just she was fighting back genuine tears. You know, it was a beautiful story and it, and she delivered it in such a beautiful way. I it didn't feel forced. Uh, Maria's uh, story <laughs> felt a bit forced. Did you think so? I liked it. What, what was her story? Her story was like, I don't take these fights so seriously because I've like faced death in the past personally. Was so it, she's like, she said she was one years old. She was, yeah, she was one, and she got I, in a car accident with her mom, and she was pronounced dead. Pronounced at the scene. dead. Yeah. And then I guess her mom yeah. kind of, you yeah. know, wasn't able to bounce back so quickly, and their relationship has felt the effects of that. But we were actually going to ask you what you thought about general timing of telling your traumatic story to The Bachelor or Bachelorette, because... If you have to tell it on a first... Well, I mean, usually I would say if you have to tell your dramatic story, I would say on your first one-on-one, or certainly not even on a one-on-one, then you know you're not winning. Especially if you are being encouraged to tell your story. Are you talking about Maria? Anyone, really. Because it's like Christina on your season was like trying to tell you about her traumatic story and Nick was like, don't hold on to it until yeah. you get your one-on-one. I was like, wait for your one-on-one. Wait for your one-on-one. <laughs> uh, so if you are allowed to tell your traumatic story uh, early, then chances are... Now, this isn't always the case because my first one-on-one was with uh, Danielle and that was and she told a very sad story about her, her ex passing. Right. And they very much wanted that story told on the first uh, date. So it really, it, it varies. The longer you can wait, the more you are endgame. You yeah. know, the more you are an I actual agree. competitor. I agree, because then they get to know you for, they get to know you first, and then when you tell your story after. There's, it, there's a rapport. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, uh, there's a type of chemistry. There's a, at least some kind of emotional connection. I mean, you, you can barely build an actual emotional connection on The Bachelor, but, you know, the first time you have a, like a, a date, that means that like it it just for whatever reason this season seems to be like every everyone like every second everyone every, has something. It's like they got all the women there and then like all right here's how this is working. Everyone's telling their story, you know, like this bum rush Joey. Well, then I also wonder how Joey goes and navigates that because sending people home is that much harder when they've told you this story about their I life. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I was really bummed. I'm going to critique Joey here. I just wanted him to send Rachel home, and it, it had nothing to do with nothing against Rachel. It was just more like. Up until her one-on-one, I didn't, you know, remember her, which I, it seems like they have a really strong connection after the date, but no one's been sent home outside of a rose ceremony. There's been no traumatic exit. Oh, there's been no, had... like, there's been... Besides and, Sydney, right? Because she was outside of the rose ceremony. That was a two-on-one, though. You were sure. hoping so he, he would had, send like her that, home. There's been no... Joey hasn't sent anyone home outside the format of the show. Mm. You were hoping that he would send her home when they had extra time? No, I was hoping he would not give her their date on the one-on-one. On a two-on-one, you have to send someone. I mean, you don't have to. There's technically no rules. I mean, mm-hmm. but that's that's the format of the show. You go on a two-on-one, someone gets sent home, or both of them get sent home. But no, Joey didn't send both of them home. He sent one of them home. Everyone else has gone home on a rose ceremony. There's been no interaction where Joey's sitting down with someone. They're having some sort of conversation, and in that moment, Joey's like, "You know what? You're not my person. No mm-hmm. offense. You seem lovely, but I just don't think there's a fit here." And not mm-hmm. because anything traumatic is ha- happening or dramatic or anything like that but just joey being honest and realizing that this person's not their person it's hard to do you know i did that a lot and i just i thought it would be more authentic but to me that just joey the people pleaser wanting to be kind of nice you know it's it comes across as super nice it very much does but it's less authentic you know it's it's also the easy way out it's much easier to not give someone a rose than to actually say, hey, listen, you know, I just don't think this is it. Can I walk you out? You know? Yeah, I see what you're saying. And there's just no way he's having all these one-on-ones and realizing with all these women that there's a strong connection. And to me, when a bachelor or a bachelorette doesn't send anyone home outside of the format of the show, you know, it makes their actual connection seem a little less authentic. Now, just a personal gripe. So you don't feel like they had a connection? They seem actually, actually at, at the end of the date, it's, I don't know, Joey's seems into her. I mean, the whole like slow burn and whatever, it's, you know, that's a move. 
Well, he said he was like, we did everything backwards because he said we had our first dance and then we like got married and then now we're here just dancing. I, I actually think so, she might go far now, yeah. you know, I think so but too. I didn't want him to sell, send Kelsey home. She's been my front runner the whole time. And it, it, it was just more when we got to this date. OK, we're in episode five. He's had multiple one on ones. No one's been sent home outside of the format. It's mm-hmm. like it's time for a breakup. He's not breaking any rules. Yeah, it's time for an awkward, messy break up it's time for you know i need a cry walking you out a sad exit you know right now we're just like oh you know autumn walks away bye you know medina but also medina seems like a very sweet person she does yeah i think she got caught up in the drama so actually quite the opposite i think medina is on her way out because other than being caught up in the drama she is the drama there no, was nothing she, between No, she's them. not drama. Okay. So she she's... immediately diffused it. She removed herself from the drama. She seems very sweet, soft-spoken. Joey doesn't have a strong connection with her relative to the other ones. And it's kind of like, that's, that's collateral damage. She's yeah. not really offering anything to the show. The reason why Jess is there and Medina is not is not because Joey's more into Jess than Medina. It's because Jess is part of drama with Maria. Yeah, but Jess got in the fight with Maria after right. getting yes. the drama rose. As we uh, uh, in the group date roses, we love roses or drama roses, and Maria's uh, was a drama, drama rose. rose. Yeah. So, question: Was Maria wrong for stealing more time? Of course not. With Joey, of course not. When you're talking to a guy who often on Andy season had roses going to the rose ceremony, you're there to build a connection. You hear this is a show where you have your, the expectation is engagement at the end. You have limited time you have no time and the idea that you're supposed to because you're safe is this is not about getting to the next week it's about building a connection so if you're trying to build a connection who gives a crap if jess or someone else hasn't had time by the way the way they showed maria interrupting jess that's how every conversation starts there is always someone interrupting someone they just showed it this time Mm-hmm. Every every time you see someone sitting down with someone else, they interrupted someone. Every time. Every single time it happens. And the only difference is sometimes they show it, sometimes they don't. Interesting. And when they had Maria interrupt Jess, obviously they knew that Jess was cracking. They knew that Jess was becoming more insecure. Clearly she has no connection with Joey. She's melting down. They have Maria go and interrupt her. They show it. Because they kind of set the stage. Well, because she Maria interrupts Caitlin, and then Jess gets mad. And Caitlin was actually really nice about it. So, are you sure it was Caitlin? It was yeah, because Caitlin and Joey were talking, and then Maria came up and interrupted Caitlin, who was really nice about it. Well, again, the, the, that that is because it happens every time. Mm-hmm. They all do that with each other. Right, and then do you think so? They all go back and they say, "Yeah, Maria." Stole him, or, or it was just Maria like Maria. Oh, like in. they're you know they'll be sitting down and be like, oh, who's talking with him now? It's like, ah. Oh, Maria is. Oh, Maria is. And meanwhile, Jess is like, I haven't had any time with him tonight. Maria's got a rose. She's talking to him now. I yeah. might not get a time. And the more you gripe about not getting time, and the more you complain about not getting time, you can guarantee not to get time. They will. Oh, then then that's when Jesse walks in. It's like, oh, sorry, the cocktail party's over. Right. You will never get time when you complain about not getting time. It's giving disrespect. Didn't Jess say that? And yeah. then she calls her a bee. Oh, they're melting down. It's, so it's yeah. Jess, uh, Leia. Leia. I, I'm jealous. I mean, this is one of the first seasons I remember that the show is, side, is not siding with the house. You know, I said last episode, the house is the bully. Mm-hmm. You know how jealous I am? I, I, I get PTSD when I watch shows like this. Like every season... People who don't get attention get jealous of people who get attention. You know, not everyone who gets attention. It's usually someone who might be, you know, Maria is clearly, Maria does Maria. Maria is this confident in herself. She's quote unquote, not, you know, she's not saying not there to make friends, but she's just like, I'm going to do me. She's not, she's not there to seek the approval of all the other women, assuming she has her own friends. And it's kind of like, she seems to be making an approach of, if I make a friend, great, but that's not the priority. And these other you know, the Sydney's, the Jess, the Leia, the Leia's. It's like they prioritize manners over care. You know, it's like, and I don't mean manners in a, manners in a good way. It's just like, you just have to be polite and respectful and, you know, don't want to ruffle any feathers. Like, that's not how you build a connection. Yeah. And how I, do you fall in love? Oh, well, I fell in love with someone who just like, they shared me. Mm, yeah. Yeah. They shared me and that's our love story. You know, I mean, Leia's just a villain. Like, Leia she's came, turned into the new villain. She came out of nowhere. You know, in the end of last episode and then throughout this whole episode. That's all editing, too. I mean, you know, some of her, like, ITMs when Mm -hmm. she is, you know, like, kind of 
talking about her look or, you know, she's being confident. Mm -hmm. Like they have that on everybody. And what what did she really do? She didn't do anything. They could have aired that in a way that was charming, you know, but they, it's just how they use that footage. So they did her dirty. And like, also like the, the, the cryon of jealous of Maria. Oh my God. I would have wished that on the seasons on Caitlyn's season or, or Andy's season, when I was getting all this attention and I was getting heat from all these guys. And yeah, did I feel like it was like, you guys are just fucking like, worry about yourselves. I'm worrying about me. Stop giving me shit because you're not getting time. I would have loved to have a jealous of Nick. Yeah. Because that's how it felt to me, mm-hmm. you know? But here's the show. Usually the show is telling you how to feel via music and things like that. To me, them showing that cry on of like jealous of Maria is almost like breaking the fourth wall of like how they are able to influence how you feel about any one person, you know, because it's the show saying, hey, this person's jealous of this person. So you're just like, oh, yeah. And usually they're more subtle about it. You know, usually you don't realize that they are influencing how you're feeling about any one person via the music or the context or the yeah. little things that they're showing. But they told us how to think and about it. Now they it. told us how to feel. Yeah. You know, they told us, they told us to feel that they're jealous of Maria. And I'm, I'm sure it's, there's a lot of truth to it. I'm sure it's true. It's just that this happens every other season and most seasons they pretend it's not jealousy mm-hmm. and they pretend there's some sort of justifiable reason to, to be mad at someone who interrupts. And then you have a villain. And then you have a villain. Yet usually in other seasons, Bachelor Nation is like, that's so disrespectful. They already have a rose. And now we're just like, what? What's the big deal? You know? So no, I, I don't think she's, Maria's doing anything wrong. Uh, and if you're not trying to get more time, then you're not there for the right reasons. It's that simple. Yeah, it's true. And yet it happens every single every season single where season. somebody does it and then everybody gets upset and it's a whole big thing. And it's every single time. It's just, you are here to make a connection with such little time already. Everybody is in it for them. You have to be a shark. It's like, just, you have to. It's amazing to me, but, like, how it happens every single season, and yet, like, how the audience feels that for any given person can vary just by how it's aired or shown. I almost feel like, because of what you just said, how the edit is usually in the favor of the house Mm -hmm. and how whenever in the past somebody's done that you know they're vilified and like it's they're the villain that maybe these women came on like jess and leia and they think that they're going to get the good edit by complaining about this but it's completely flipped on them they all thought they all went home thinking maria is going to be the villain yeah 100 percent. i wonder what jess thought when she had that little well, they're also making it a little easier because like usually the sometimes when there's like the aggressive person by and by aggressive, I mean the person who's not patiently sitting on the couch all night while they just be like, oh, I got a rose, you know, go talk to that person. No, it's not. It's a house divided a little bit in this particular house. Sometimes it's not a house divided. Sometimes it's just like everyone's just against one person. But that doesn't mean that they're right, you know? Right. Was it? I think it was Lexi who said. She's, she said, yeah. uh, Lexi, they're just jealous of Maria. Yeah. yeah. So Lexi's kind of standing up for her and outspoken. But that's the thing. Just because Lexi was able to, was willing to say that and stand up for Maria gave the show some, something to work with in terms of the edit. Right. And Lexi's so likable that. So fascinating. But I'm, I, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm, a, I'm a little jealous. I would have loved a uh, jealous of, of, of Nick, uh, cry on. But, um, I do think Kelsey, if she doesn't win, if I'm wrong. Top two, Daisy, Kelsey. And you think whoever loses will be the next Bachelorette? Next Bachelorette. I mean, wouldn't Kelsey be an excellent Bachelorette? Yeah, she'd be really fun. I also loved Joey's reaction to her story about her mom, how he was like, everything that you've described about your mom is how I see you, and she'd be so proud. And it's just clear clear to me that he's really listening. I was really taught. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm a new father, and just any conversations around parent-child is... is uh, makes me weep pulling at your heart it pulls at my heart stream but i i really loved how she delivered it it didn't felt forced it felt very genuine it felt like a conversation she would want to have with someone that she was having strong feelings for i think they have not been showing us as much of joey and kelsey as and you know i think they've been kind of holding back it same with daisy you know and when he's sitting down with daisy joey is almost kind of foreshadowing you know so clearly mm-hmm. there's a connection there you know i do think kelsey has the most chemistry with him because on the one-on-one she seemed nervous Versus, like, I think the other woman, like, have a scripted approach to it versus she actually has... more at stake. Like, she has a genuine, like, liking of him. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier, just how the women kind of prepare to tell their story. And 
how much, you know, just some of them seem more scripted than it, others. It felt like Kelsey told a story because she's thinking, this is a man I'm falling for and I'm shocked and I want to have this conversation mm -hmm. because I'd have this conversation with any man that I'm falling in love with. And some of the other women who are telling their stories are telling the story because I'm on The Bachelor and this is how I get more screen time and airtime. Yeah. I could be wrong, but or, that's just how it felt. Or they feel, I have to share this or I'm going to get sent home. When someone's sharing their sad story on a group date, you, <laughs> kiss to death. You know, <laughs> well, you know you're on the way out. <laughs> Kelsey T, another Kelsey. Again, I, I do think uh, she's a potential front runner. There's something about when they flash actor on the screen, it does, it does make you a little suspect, you know? I'm surprised that they cast people who are, you know, either producers or actors or anyone in the entertainment industry. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's in LA, it's too. It's an opportunity to immediately, it's, it's low-hanging fruit for a potential villain. She's not really getting into any drama. I mean, she's, she emoted this episode. Yeah, she had a hard time when you know, he didn't pick she up seems the one-on-one. -on -one. You know, she's developing feelings and on the fence whether or how much... I still... I, she, she's a potential top four. And, but also, like, Rachel... Rachel came out of nowhere, but they had a really nice one-on-one. -on -one and yeah. it seems like there's a strong connection there. So we shall see. Yeah. Anyway. And then Autumn does get sent home. Autumn got... Autumn seems, Autumn seems really sweet, too. She, she seems, seems really sweet. They just had nothing. Yeah. She, yeah, she kind of like bled into the background. Just yeah, this like, is, you know, week five, we're getting into the week where it's just like lovely people are getting sent home because either they're just not in Joey's top four and they're just not willing to participate in drama. Autumn needed a big emotional story. <laughs> yeah, she didn't have, did well, she not, did she not? Autumn didn't have a well, big. Well, you know what, let's give it up for Autumn for feeling like she didn't have to like, you know. She was herself. Tell some story, you know. It's like uh, it was her downfall, but yeah, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think that was her downfall. No, yeah, I don't think no, so. I think they just had nothing between them. Yeah, I, I mean, do. Yeah, they're like friends. I think yeah. that if she had come out of left field with a big story, he would have kept her for another week. I don't. No, then... I don't. I don't think the lead gives a fuck about any of these stories. Really? No. You don't think it makes it harder to send people home no. if they've just shared something like that? Week no, they usually, or... that usually happens. Like, yeah, if it will often happen, like because, you know, usually uh, going into a, a cocktail party, the lead isn't torn. You know, they go they usually have a decision. In the, they, they usually have their decisions made. Things can happen. Stuff can change. And again, not a coincidence that oftentimes the lead is then forced to listen to all the people he knows he's already going to send home, you know, get their story out. Does it make it slightly more awkward? I guess, you know, but no. I honestly, you're the lead is so numb to hearing these stories. You're 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 kind of faking it, you know, and it's only with the women that you're really connecting with like, you know, Kelsey and uh that he's uh, obviously invested in that story cuz he cares about he cares about her, you mm -hmm. know? And not all of these stories are as genuine as they want to come across because, again, it's such a trope of the sh show. It's like anything, you know, a doctor. You know, how do doctors do what they do, you know, especially when they have to deliver bad news? Over they get numb to it. You know, you deal with it every day. You know, you get numb to these situations. Yeah. So as the lead, you know, you're just like, oh, OK, here we go. All right. How is your heart broken? What's your trauma? And so you really save that consideration, that genuine consideration for the people you really care about. All right. Well, that about does it for a you know, little, little reality recap for you on going deeper. Well, it's time to get to JWoww. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed doing it. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknickatthevalfiles.com for all things texting office hours, mediation, and Ask Nick. We'll be back Monday with Ask Nick and then Tuesday's reality recap. And then again next week, the one and only Natalie Joy returns to the Vile Files to talk about... Uh, the delivery, the our birth story, uh, everything about being parents, all the nooks and crannies of... Everything we've been dying to know. So we will share all that with you. I'm sure it will be heartfelt and emotional. Uh, I mean, literally, I was uh, watching River doing the photo shoot, and I just like, <laughs> like start crying. Mm. It's just unbelievable. Just melted. I'm excited for this one. It's unbelievable. Yeah, bring your tissues. Bring your tissues. Uh, all right. It's time for Jaywell. Zoa! You gotta check out Zoa, Dwayne, The Rock Johnson's energy drink. Zoa, energy is a better for you energy drink with great taste, electrolytes, B and C vitamins, and zero sugar. It's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash. 
Here at the Vile Files, we've been recording and editing some massive interviews, and my team has loved Zoa to give them the extra boost to get through their days. With ingredients that enhance energy levels, Zoa Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation to keep them focused as they edit through some intense interviews. Zoa has eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape. And my team's favorite happened to be the Frosted Grape and Cherry Limeade. So find your spark and order Zoa Energy today. Available online and at a store near you. Find out where you can find it at zoaenergy.com and find retailers like Amazon, 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. Oh, it's, uh, hey, all you busy, hungry people out there. Have you checked out Hungry Root yet? Well, if not, you are missing out because chances are, if you're a busy bee and maybe you are uh, living by yourself, got a couple of roommates, you don't have time to grocery shop, you don't have time to meal plan or meal prep. Oh my God, does that take up a lot of energy and time? What are we going to have for dinner tonight? What should we go? Go to the grocery store. Oh my God, you can save hours in your day by just relying on the good people at Hungry Root. Hungry Root is your partner in healthy living. It's the easiest way to get fresh, high quality groceries and simple, healthy recipes delivered to your door. Take a fun, short quiz uh, and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like, to eat the kitchen appliances you use and more. Then they'll build you a personalized cart with all your groceries needs for the week and give you delicious recipes, recommendations to put those groceries to good use. All the recipes are super easy to make. Their instructions are easy to follow. Most of their meals are you can make in like 20 to 40 minutes, easy to clean up. The convenience is amazing and they're delicious. They're good for you. Absolutely no reason not to check out Hungry Root if you care about what you eat, what you put in your body, and you just don't have time to grocery shop or meal prep or all those things. And not only do they have great meals and meal kits and give you all your great recipes, but they also have pantry staples, healthy snacks, sweets. So I love using Hungry Root as a way to not only create my lunches and dinners, but have my snacks throughout the day and just like fun new things to try. Right now, Hungry Root is offering the Valfile listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get 40% off your first delivery and get free veggies for life. That's right. That's HungryRoot.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Jenny. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah, you're popping my uh, official podcast cherry. I love that. So, but you've done so that, you know, because you know how fans can be. Like, you, yes, you've, I've done you've... like the rounds with Jersey Shore for like five, 10 minutes. You step mm-hmm. in, you give the shout out to the show, which we're now airing already again, like season 742. Um, <laughs> and then we move on. But I've never done like a full blown, like hour interview of just me. I'm honored. We're honored. I'm honored. The show is honored. You blew. I mean, you've always been big, but you blew up since we did our like little thing. Uh, Fat Fit Fun. Fat Fit yeah. Fun years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm so proud. I'm like a mom watching and then watching you fall in love and now engage with a baby on the way. Like so proud. Well, thank you. It was really fun getting to know you when we did that whole Fat Fit. I, I when I met you, was a little intimidated. Yeah. No, do you know I have like complete stage fright and I was so terrified. I'm pretty sure I like developed a stutter on that. And even when I saw you at Variety the other month, I have like a really big stage fright thing. So anytime I go live, anytime there's an audience, I am like panicking for absolutely no reason. Why is that, do you think? I wish I could tell you. I think it might just be I grew up in a small town. Uh, I wasn't popular. I wasn't the one that was like in theater doing anything Mm -hmm. to like stand out. I always kind of like blended in the background. And this is just my theory. I actually have no idea. I never went to like therapy over it. I appreciate my problems. Uh, Makes great reality TV. (laughs) But um, ever since a kid, you know, I have this one memory of like when I was eight years old and I had to make a costume and stand in the auditorium and my dad made butterfly wings, but they were Uh, out of cardboard and they were so heavy that they broke during the performance (gasps) and that's the only stage I like performance I recall and ever since then I like have not gone on one so when Jersey Shore came out we got like thrown into it I shake uncontrollably shake to the point where like my best friend Nicole will like hit me being like dude your knees are about to buckle like calm down Oh my gosh. Yeah. Even yeah. now, I'll probably relax in like five to, to 10 yeah. minutes. But you're a little but... nervous? Yeah. You mentioned before Even we started that you. you're an extreme introvert. Super introvert. Just for example, like somebody needs a video to like 
last week. And I'm not doing it until today because I have hair and makeup mm-hmm. on and I'm put together and I'm like, all right, I'm doing Nick's podcast and I'm here and I'm ready and I'm going to do this video. But it took like a week just to like get build it up, build it up yeah. because I don't know if I'm not in that mental state. I can't go and like go on Instagram and go live or put out TikToks, which look extremely hard to do, even though my nine year old daughter does them like on the regular I can't turn it on like that. I think I've gotten worse over the years, too. I I totally empathize with that. Really? I'm more of an ambivert, as as so I've been told, which is... Like a switch hitter? Yeah. Okay. I can go both ways. I think as I've gotten older, I've become more and more introverted. I think I was more extroverted when I was younger, and I've always had an introverted side, but I definitely, like... I'm more introverted in the sense that I, I, nef- I need to be alone to recharge. Like, yes. You know, like extroverts like recharge their batteries by being around people and introverts charge by being alone. I'm alone. I have to be. Same. Yeah. I'll go film and then I'll go dark for like a day and I don't want to talk to anyone. Like I just hosted a strip club Friday night, which was, I was a nervous wreck over oh God, for yeah. on <laughs> camera. And the Saturday, I didn't speak to anybody. Yeah. I ordered food. I yeah. went from my bed to my couch, mm-hmm. my couch to bed. I watched like all my shows, which are ancient, by the way. And that's it. I have to recharge by yeah. like not speaking to anyone and like just decompressing. I'm getting the sense that like being in the public eye at this point is a means to an end. It's like, yes, like I recently did my friend Jason Tardick's podcast and he asked me, he's like, you're in the press a lot. And his line of questioning was going around like, what do you do to be in the press all the time? And I cut him off and I was like, I make no effort to ever be in the press. Like it's usually a product of like people I have on the show. And yes, the show, like we, we pop off on certain topics uh, and that can create noise and I get it. But like people find that sometimes hard to believe for people in the public eye where I told Jason, it's just like, listen, I understand what it is. Yes, obviously. There's a part of me that's always liked attention. That's how I ended up on reality TV. But at the same time, at this point in my life, like being in the public eye is a cost of doing business. Yes. Would you relate? 100%. And I say this with the utmost respect. I am no Kardashian. If I'm out there, it's by choice and not even but like I wanted to do when you asked me to come on. I was so excited from a friendship level. I love watching your guys' podcast. You're so cute. Like, let me do this. Let, you know, and it comes from just like, I, I really have to choose the opportunities. I get a lot of them, but I decline a lot of them because I just don't feel that I need to be in the press just to be in the press. Yeah. Or it's, I don't feel like I need to do something just because like I can do it. And people won't believe me. No, I they're going to roll their eyes yeah, at us yeah. and be like, yeah, whatever. I think part of it too is like, I mean, I've been in the game for a while now, but fuck compared to you. 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. 15 fucking years. How many like, you're just doing it for your 15 minutes comments have you seen over the years? Enough to say, (laughs) turn that 15 minutes into 15 15 years. years, Right? (laughs) Yeah. 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 But it's, you know, I think we're just so relatable. That's all I can put it to because again, and I, I have to say this for my roommates too, we're not attention seeking for press. Like we're not out there hustling like other reality stars and trying to like stay relevant and pushing the envelope. We're actually very protective of each other on TV too, which, you know, kind of makes us boring in a sense. And a lot of people are like, oh my God, your show's got boring. And I'm like, no, it's got protective. Like these are, these are truly my family and my friends. But again, it doesn't make for great reality TV, but some, for some reason we have a great fan base that love to grow with us, I guess. Well, for all the doubters of what we just talked about, let me make an argument. Okay. You and your cast ability to be on TV as long as you have been and being in the public eye is a result of the fact that you guys don't seek it out. Because to seek it out, it's like it takes so much effort to like go out of your way to do or say something that gets you press and then to read that press and follow that press. That's why people burn out. Yeah. That's why people kind of like they don't protect their mental health. And you guys, again, what you what you guys have been willing to do from where I sit is the willingness to just be your most authentic selves ignore the noise whatever noise that is whether it's fan accounts or trolls or press that's hard right 
but like the fact that you have been able to do that speaks to like it verifies that you don't seek it out because if you did you probably wouldn't be sitting here today 100 percent. you know and i think what also helps with a lot of other reality tv shows that they don't have that is we're not a revolving cast it's us mm -hmm. you can't fire us mm -hmm. and, and replace us actually i hope don't <laughs> Don't fire me. But, uh, you know, so it's like what our story is going to be is what our story is going to be. It's not like the housewives or, you know, other franchises like real world or things like that, where they'll just be like, well, if you're not going to play ball, we're just going to toss you to the side and find someone that will. Yeah. But we created this like unity where it's like we're just whatever's going on in our lives and some of it's really good, bad and indifferent, we'll go to production, like we'll talk about it, but you need to protect us in the same aspect because these are very vulnerable subjects and you know, it's gonna live forever on television. And as you will know, having children and them being able to see it one day, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's nerve wracking. When Nan and I first started dating, I took her it was our first like ever red carpet public. Yeah. We had like just gone public. We went to the MTV Awards. I'm, we sat and together. Sat, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I don't know turned and looked at Nick and I was like, you have no, like, I am shitting myself. <laughs> like, no. I cannot believe. She was sweating. I was like, who are you? Like, <laughs> she was being so weird. I'm like, calm down. I was so unwell. And y'all took a selfie with me. And I remember I posted it and everyone was like, who? Like, everyone from my hometown's like, what the fuck, Natalie? Like, what are you doing? How ridiculous was our table, though? No, it was insane. This, <laughs> it was the Snooki insane. got and, lit. And got Joey lit. was there. Joey, um, who's Who, now, now working for Barstool. Barstool. Yes. Yeah, who's hilarious. We had to be like removed. And yeah. like, again, <laughs> yeah. MTV is like total parents. Like, you really got to get your shit together <laughs> and like keep it together. Nicole like blacked out, started yelling. <laughs> yeah, it was it <laughs> Nikki, the Nikki host? Glazer. Yeah, Nikki yes. Glazer was the host. I'm like, oh my God, what yeah. is happening? But yeah. it was just so fun to see Natalie completely fan out to y'all. I mean, do you realize how iconic you are? No. You don't. No. And for the first Jersey Shore before it became family vacation, they did one hell of a job not letting us know. Like, I'll never forget. We were filming season two in Miami. We're not allowed cell phones, Internet, TV, nothing, no pens, paper or anything. But we had these like really obnoxious paparazzi that would follow us and yell stuff. And one day one was like, Jay, wow, sitch. And we're like, what? They're like, can you believe that President Obama just used you in a speech? And I like, never, my head snapped to like the <gasps> cameraman. I was like, why the fuck didn't you tell me? <laughs> like, so we were so shocked. They wouldn't tell us anything because they didn't want to give away the illusion that we were too good to work at the places that we worked at because we truly worked there. Yeah. We got a paycheck and they were like, you, this, this is the format of the show. And if you guys are celebrities, you become a different show. That's, that's true. You would change yeah. your perception of who you are. You would act different and yeah. it would be a show about celebrities integrating with the norms. Yes. And it, and I have to give it to them. Like in hindsight, they did a great job. But going through it, I was so, we were all so bitter. Yeah. I'm like, Obama? Yeah. You hear that? that a lot from like Basher people complaining a lot of the complaints to like complain about producers. Well, they didn't tell me this or they kept me in the dark. And listen, producers can do some shady shit. We all know. But a lot of time is this, you're not actors and they want authentic reactions and they're yeah. trying to protect the story and they're trying to protect people's authentic reactions, which is why they do what they do. Yeah. yeah. And my uh, Sally Ann Salsato, the creator of Jersey Shore, came from The Bachelor. She created oh, The really? Bachelorette. Mm. She created the first Bachelorette. I did not know that. Yeah. I, I, who I met at The Variety? Which is that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. she did the wedding, um, the first wedding of The Bachelorette and um, so on and so on. Tristan and Ryan. And Ryan, yeah. yeah. And uh, the rest is history. She went on and left The Bachelorette. But, you know, she was part of that formula. How did she, I mean, I don't really know the origin stories of, like, how yeah, they, ask, how how they found you, the and group. And how did you and, get on the show? Yeah, how, what, how did all so, that start? Many, many moons ago, this was probably three years before it aired, there was a casting call for VH1, Paris Hilton, my new BFF. 
Like, will you be my new BFF? Yeah. And my gay best friend of 20 years wanted to be on this show so badly, like so badly. So I told him, come to my nightclub. We're, ho we're like doing like a hosting of tryouts. And he gets there. It's the only time he ever visited me at the club, mind you. So I was bitter. I was like, oh, so you, find, you, you come for Paris, but not for me. And um, they literally looked at him. They're like, you tried out in every New York City club. Like, you need to go away. And I was like, don't Stop. do that. So they're like, but if she signs up with you, I will let it slide. So the application ended up online. It's more, I'm horrified, mortified, everything and above. Do we have, can we? You can, if you Google it, it's like, I hate blondes. <laughs> I want to make out with this one, that one. Like It was treacherous. It was so embarrassing. Like the biggest thing was like, I hate blondes. Cause I was so mad at him for like, I'm like, why do you want to be her best friend? Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm an only child, so I'm very protective. So they called me like six months later and they're like, you would be great for that show, but we also have another VH1 show that's like a voting off Guido show that we think you'd be great for. It's like the number one Guido. And I'm like, ah, whatever. I mean, at that time, like during the early 2000s, there were so many castings of shows that never got picked up. Sure. It was like out of sight, out of mind. And I kept doing auditions over and over again. And then one time they're like, yeah, now we need a sizzle of you because it's now MTV and it's more of a reality based show. We need to see a day in your life. So, of course, I like go to the club with like the gaudy boys. I do the most obnoxious things. And then they're like, all right, you need to come to a hotel in New Jersey. And I've never really been to New Jersey before. I was total Long Island girl. And they're like, you're either going to stay in a hotel for like six days or you're going to come back in like 36 days. And we need your cell phone and everything, your keys, your wallet. And looking back at as old as I am now, I'm like, are you dumb? <laughs> like 25 <laughs> like doing, years yeah. old, walking. Here's all my stuff. They lock you in a hotel. They do all your interviews. There was like 20 of us. And then they dwindled it down to eight. And then they're like, printed out the MapQuest directions. MapQuest. <laughs> put a producer in my car and said, drive to this location. And that is what you see in the first episode of us showing up to the house. What? I got chills right now. Like no idea <gasps> what the chills. show concept was. No idea if who's going to be in there. Didn't even know if it was a voting off show at the point. So. No so you didn't even know what you were filming. No. Before you even said yes to it. No. Even if I did. No. Wow. Like, they would just ask all these questions. Babe, do you know what MapQuest is? Yes. <laughs> I had to do that, too, for, like, a second. <laughs> One minute. Because, like, j and I, we would go <laughs> online, and then we would print off instructions, and yes. then we would take it and put it in our yes. car and be like, oh, what's my okay. God forbid if there was a detour. Yeah. Oh, my Game God. Game over. Game over. You're lost. You're, <laughs> you're using the payphone. Call your parents crying. <laughs> Happened so many times. Exit closed. <laughs> what? <laughs> But yeah, so that's that that's is it. wild. And we walk into this house. I was like, what am I just gonna sit here? Like, do we stay here? Yeah. Like at what point did you realize what it was? Because it was so the show chaotic. Absolutely chaotic. chaos. Yeah. One could argue, we say this a lot about a lot of television shows these days, but one could argue they couldn't make that today. No, we would be canceled. Yeah. For sure. And yeah. I'll just say that openly. Yeah. For just Have you guys ever had to deal with, you know, because in cancel culture. well, cancer culture being what it is that people like to go back and find old shit, you know, that people have put online, even though maybe times have changed or, you know, not that it was right out then, but, you know, that times have changed. Have you guys had to deal with stuff like that where people have gone back and referenced old episodes or old tweets or shit like that where you guys maybe weren't mm -hmm. as tactful as maybe you've learned to be today? From what I know, thank goodness, no. I mean, no. And I'm trying to speak, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I feel like as bad as our show was, we weren't like vile. Yeah. <laughs> to, to like, we were just, I think we were like more internally, like just beating the crap out of each other and saying the most yeah. disrespectful things to each other. Right. And the first season was just pure insanity. But again, they didn't know what they were, getting themselves into as production. My producers say it the best way. They had like 5 million hours of footage. If you gave it to 10 different production companies, you would have had 10, 10 different, different shows. shows. Yeah. yeah. And like, I will say this, um, after the first season with all the fights and stuff, we did get in a lot more fights 
they just couldn't show them anything outside of the first season. Uh, they didn't show. And I'm telling you, vi violent fights, not provoked by us, by fans or haters, I guess. What? I just got a show idea. <gasps> like the old, the old. What footage? if they went back and just made more Jersey Shore episodes from never seen before footage? Italy would be 40 episodes minimum. When I tell you we were there the longest, we were the, in Miami the longest, they had an episode cap at eight. So whatever could fit, could fit. Mm -hmm. My production company would like, honestly, it would be their wet dream to go back. They should. And it's, yeah, <sighs> it, it, it's insanity. And I think like the statue of limitations is up, so I'll let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you those some, lights. Now. some laws were broken. Yeah. Well, I guess in in one aspect, we were defending ourselves. Like I'm telling you, like bottles, like glass bottles being uh, like thrown. with civilians, like with other people. Yeah, like they would just love to hate us. I'll never forget. We were at um, Bamboo, and I, I still feel bad to this day. And from the top, we were at the bottom. Someone took like a glass beer bottle and mm. launched it. But one of our coworkers that worked at the store store dodged into it to like not let it hit the girls and like split his eye open, had to be like rushed out. It, <gasps> terrible things. Oh my, oh my God. God. Yeah. But how was, how was production involved in this when it's filming? Would they just back off and let it happen? Back, we had security. I mean, when you're... Whew talking from up top like there's no yeah you know there's yeah. no way to protect us at all angles and this is a time when television where there were the unlimited options that there are today and you were at at, at its peak do you know how many viewers sure Ten, like 10 million live that's crazy insane that's what they said like nine point for nine. cable television cable and like network television yeah. right now would just oh like yes dream of having yeah. numbers like everyone that would reality. get a bonus mm -hmm. yeah nobody sees those numbers anymore that's incredible i don't even think like the nfl gets that maybe well, they do yeah 50 million people watched uh, the chiefs beat the oh, Buffalo well, bills okay low-key because right. taylor swift yeah well, that's fine. well nfl well taylor not the taylor. Bursar. <laughs> Bursar. it was great though taylor. that is insane it's taylor yeah um and jason being shirtless i feel do you like the <laughs> chest hair on jason i love jason and I love his wife. I think they're just like an awesome family. I and agree. I love love. I saw a meme of a girl who like went to high school with, uh, what is Jason's wife's name? Kylie. Kylie. And they <gasps> I showed just her. found out she follows me on Instagram. Oh, does she? <gasps> Ooh, flex. I know. Uh, She's but gonna they, unfollow me. They now. showed her yearbook <laughs> picture and it was a girl who was like, I went to high school with her and now she's in a booth with Taylor Swift and I'm doing whatever she was doing or whatever and just like comparing her life trajectory versus uh, uh kylie's it was pretty funny that's sad uh yeah we're big, we're uh we're big <laughs> yeah. uh, are you a swifty i am by default my daughter's a huge swifty i went to the tour the concert how old are your kids nine and seven nine and seven has um your daughter I don't know if it's, I mean, I was watching Jersey Shore at 10 years old. So has she, <laughs> mom, <laughs> mom was at work raising four Mom's kids on her own. Yes. Yeah. So I'd get home from school and I get it. Didn't care. D has she shown any sort of like interest in why you are so famous? Like, does she know? Well, so we still film family vacation and they're a huge part of the show. Right. Because they really do follow our family lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, my daughter was born on television. She was born on Snooki and JWoww. That's crazy. That is insane. Crazy. Has she seen that footage? Like, has she seen the no, episode? No, I actually, um, so because it's so old and I, I don't know if it's on streaming yet, but I have the DVDs and I'm still waiting for like two seasons and I've harassed MTV. I'm like, can I just... <laughs> Can I get the season? <laughs> but she definitely knows she's very, I would say, she acknowledges who her mom is, mm -hmm. but she's so appreciative. Aww. But also snobby. Yep. She's a little snot rag. They all are. I'm just warning you. Mm. And having a girl first, just they're built different. And I'm trying not to scare you. What do you mean by that? For instance, I have a son that's seven with autism. I would have a hundred of him before another daughter. 
If they don't put the fear of God in you, I don't know what does. <laughs> well, tell tell me more. What do I need? Are you saying that as a mom or a parent in general? Both. And you try and mold them to be the best version of you, right? Because they're mm-hmm. going to be a version of you. You want the best of you. So she's got my toughness. She's got my ex- tough exterior. And I'll probably regret admitting this on, on here. But like, okay. So my daughter at like four years old swore. But she used it accordingly. How so? I was like, mm, a little impressed. She goes, she said, I can't even remember the swear word. Like, I think she turned to me and was like, well, you're a bitch or something. And I was like, how did you know? She just, or she just turned five. And I'm like, how do you know at five years old this word? And she, and that's a problem with trying to like shelter them, but not. Mm-hmm. And buses, buses will ruin your life. Don't ever use a bus for your kids schooling, but back on track. So I was like, oh my God. And I like called my dad and I'm like, what did you do? And he's like, well, you were like 15 at the time when you did this. I was like, what did you do? He's like, threatened Dawn soap. So I was like, wash your mouth out. I'm going to wash your mouth out. And Mm -hmm. she goes, okay. (gasps) And I was like, you're supposed to say no. (laughs) (laughs) Like you're supposed to say, I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. And she goes, okay. So I had to follow through because the golden rule with kids is, You got to follow through. You cannot make empty threats. You will learn that they will use those against you in the court of law for the rest of your life. So I did it. You washed your mouth out. She didn't care. (gasps) She looked at me and goes, that's all you got? (gasps) Swear to God. True story. Is it tough tough being mad and impressed at the same time? So impressed. But that (laughs) is what she got from me. So what I learned is her discipline are hugs. She is so ready to like fight like I am. Like she is so externally tough that a hug will dismantle it all. And that was the day that I stopped any kind of punishment like Mm -hmm. that. And so if she's like having like problems or school or she's so mad at her brother or she's like getting to a level that is just unheard of. I'm like, well, Lonnie, let's go upstairs. We're going to take five minutes. You go to your room. I go to my room. We're going to come back and we're going to have a conversation. And before the conversation starts, I give her a hug. And I do like the Disney rule, which is I don't let go until she lets go. That's great. Yeah. And it's helped a lot because she's she's got a temper. She's fiery. She has a lot of empathy for people, but it like comes out in like high emotion. Like she'll get so upset if like a classmate gets in trouble and she wasn't there to defend them or. Yeah. And she's just like so like you have no idea what they did to my friend and they weren't allowed to go to the playground. And she'll get like teary eyed and. (gasps) really like I want to go back to school and say something and she does not stand for bullying but when she gets like that she'll take it out on her brother so we've learned to like dismantle her through like affection like Mm -hmm. true affection like and just breaking down those barriers but I noticed like that's she's me like she's ready like she's me on the original Jersey Shore like and I'm like is this genetic or is this like nature versus nurture because like she's never seen that side of me she's never seen the show interesting i'm like an allowed a half italian like person but like i'm you know i'm not like swearing and cursing in front of them like they're not seeing that jersey Mm -hmm. shore side of me if anything they're seeing like a sedated like keep your shit together jenny side yeah so i'm like i always wonder is like nature versus nurture does she just have like oh i think for sure yeah this genetic trait of being like she inherited your personality for sure but i I, it's such a great story and thank you for sharing just because like you know back in the day parenting was always like it was just this is how you do it it was like a one track yeah you know and the fact that you you know had the wisdom to uh, my daughter is has a different personality and there's different ways to parent different temperaments yeah and, and your, also, your daughter would be so much better for it. Finding the problem. Yeah. And then I found the problem. And she goes, Mommy, I watched a bad episode on my YouTube, which then it got removed. It said the word. And that's why I said it. So she even to and now to this day, she's an incredible communicator. When she calms down, she'll come downstairs and she'll be like, I'm so sorry for saying the things that I did. Here's why I said them. And then five minutes later, she punches her brother. But then like, you know, and then the cycle begins (laughs) again. I remember, I don't know how old I was, but I remember my mom, I was in trouble and my mom spanked me and I turned around and I said, that didn't hurt. Yeah. 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 I I didn't spank. 
because I knew what it was like to be spanked. Yeah. So I was like, I need to try something else and like wash your mouth out. My friend was like, hot sauce. I was like, I can't do it. Like I was panicking yeah. in the kitchen, but I was like, you can't say that. The Should wash the your mouth out makes the most sense because it's like you have a dirty mouth. Yes. Like you can't say words like that. It's dirty. Let's like, yeah. And if you're like, we have to clean it if you're going to like have a dirty mouth. Yeah. That makes sense. I feel like logically for a kid, the hot sauce just feels kind of hot like sauce. torture. Yeah. It's like, Jesus. Oh, I said that to her yeah. the other day as a joke. And she goes, Well, mom, I love hot stuff. I'm like, Can we not? Okay. Can, can you pretend <laughs> yeah. that you like will take, like, because we joke about like spanking and stuff. I'm like, Don't make me spank you for the first time. You're like, You're about to be 10. She goes, Mom, you'd have to take me out with like a pan. I'm like, Can you pretend? Well, she loves a challenge, clearly. She, she, and a, challenge a, accepted and every a pun, time. A punishment for her is a challenge to endure. Oh, yeah. and uh, my son, total opposite. If I even raise my voice, I'm so sorry. <gasps> Cute as can be, sweet as pie, total opposite. If I even spanked his like hiney once, it would be like the the world ended. Oh my god! When did you find out your son was autistic, and how how? How did it happen? So that was that was challenging. I want to say he was about 18 months old. So I had obviously Milani who was older. So I knew like milestones that needed to be hit. But around 15 to 18 months, I really noticed like he wouldn't acknowledge his name. Wouldn't acknowledge. And then I started realizing he actually wouldn't acknowledge anything. He would acknowledge pitch. So if I'd be like Grayson, Grayson, and then I would yell Grayson, he would turn. And then I was like, is he deaf? Like I, I so oh. there was no autism on the table. And I actually thought at that point he's deaf and he just hears high pitched screaming. Like I would have to yell and he would just kind of turn lightly. So we set up um, like multiple appointments, one being with um, ENT, ear, nose, throat. And we had his hearing tested around that time and it came back perfect. And that was the day that I went into my car and started crying. Because I knew then that it was something different because I was hearing, I don't know if you uh, guys heard, but like kids get a lot of tubes in their ears or they have hearing yeah. problems. So I had three friends that just had kids that went through like tube surgery where they had to like put the tubes in because a lot of ear infections. And he had like five up until that point, which is a lot. And I'm like, it's, it's not, it's not hearing. And at that point, I was like, this is going to be something that I don't think I'm prepared for. So I went to, in the state of New Jersey, they have like an early developmental program with no diagnosing. They come into your home and they just see what you're like behind on as a kid. And well, they're like, he scored perfectly for our services. So I'm like, oh, great. So I was like, let me get him through these services before I, and I canceled his pediatrician appointments. And I, I, cause you have um, 18 and you have 24 months. Mm -hmm. pediatrician appointments but I was like I'm canceling them and I'm going to do these services because during those you actually go through basically like a developmental test to see if they're hitting all their developmental you know cues right markers, but I knew yeah. he was good markers and he was yeah. going to fail it and I knew if he was going to fail it something else was going to come so I canceled everything I was like let me get him six months of this like in-home therapy that the state provides you and then we'll do it and then I even waited I think to like two years and like four months i was like finally we're gonna take on this pediatrician <laughs> failed miserably <gasps> failed so miserably that they wrote me a script for the nearest specialized hospital and we're like you really need to consider your getting your son diagnosed um and when i tell you i said i already cried once i'm never crying again over this i said i gotta get put my big boy pants on I was like, okay. His father didn't take it in that in that way. It was really hard on him because I think, like, from a, a father's perspective, like your son is supposed to be, you know, your son, and you don't know which avenue you're gonna be because there's it's a spectrum for a reason. Mm -hmm. And at that point, Grayson was nonverbal. He did not listen to anything that we said. He was, you know, doing his classic twinkle toes and, and flapping his arms. So anyways, I went to the ho specialized hospital and they, I can tell you right now, they did not want to diagnose Jay Wow's kid. Like they just, they were like, holy shit. 
they brought in like five of the top oh. doctors because like a lot of times like with the therapist they'll just bring in like you know pt but like you're not a doctor like mm -hmm. th they brought five doctors across the board and they put them through like so many tests and he ended up being mild to moderate with autism and when i tell you this all happened like rapid fire and it probably didn't but in my head it did because I felt like I was in like a fever dream like I felt like like nothing was real and still at that point they were like this is a, and this is what I would love to talk about because this is the problem with um things like autism that you think okay now there's an end to a means and now I can get help I got the diagnosis I was told getting the diagnosis will help get him therapies. Then I find out my insurance doesn't cover any of his therapies and autism is considered congenital like Down syndrome and there's a whole congenital carve out. What does congenital mean? It's present from birth, so it's been there forever. Oh, so you're yes. born with, okay. So you're born, born with it. They don't take care of anything that you're born with. So they looped him in with like Down syndrome and things that you're like cerebral palsy. So like the insurance basically was like, you don't. That's you a don't, you problem. That's a you problem. <gasps> So me putting my big boy pants on was like, well, if it's going to be a me problem, I'm going to go all out. And I'll never forget this. And I love this lady. I wish I remembered her name. And to this day, I want to thank her at the hospital. This Russian, I'm talking old Russian woman pulled me in a room and she goes, you get him 40 hours of ABA every week for the next three years and you will see a different son every week and to me as a mom that's trying to work and be on television and do all these things i'm like 40 hours like this is yeah. insane like that's a full-time job literally literally so i allowed myself to cry one more time and then i was like well i got to figure out how to get insurance like get different insurance and then i need private insurance so i opened a business and I hired two employees because a state minimum requires two full-time employees. I was like, well, I'm just going to hire people full-time. I At that time, FabFitFun was big. Facebook was big. All these things where you can make like YouTube videos. Again, I'm introverted, but I would go the extra mile for my son. So I was like, I'll make YouTube videos. I'll, I'll hire these people mm -hmm. to video and do all these things so I can have insurance. And I bought the best plan in the state of New Jersey. I cried to my doctor. She looks at me. She goes, I'm breaking protocol right now. I have a client that also owns an ABA therapy school that does in-home ABA. So she pulls me into a room and she goes, I'm totally breaking patient confidentiality right now. She pulls her ABA therapist and me into her office. She goes, I need you two to meet. You two are going to get along very well. And I just started crying in her office again, even though I swore I wasn't going to cry. And she goes, yeah, I'll meet with your son next week. We'll start 40 hours next week. What is ABA therapy? So it's honestly, I, I don't even know how to begin to explain it because to me, the standard ABA therapy that children do is... Uh, isn't what I experienced. So in-home therapy, it, for instance, doesn't speak, doesn't listen, has no idea what his name is. By month three, I'll never forget, I made a joke to Grayson and I said, um, can you go get me an apple off the counter? Made a joke. He gets off his stool. I hear him thudding in his little diaper and he grabbed an apple and he gave it to me. And I just... It melt. It was the first time that like there was a sign that it was happening. So they teach him everything. It was very slow in the beginning, but they taught him colors. He only knew blue and he knew a red apple for months. I'm talking six, seven months. But the moment he understood blue, he understood later yellow, which I have a little cute video of him, yellow. And then he understood green and then he understood red. And to me, that's what ABA therapy is. To other people, their kid might be going through a different type of program. So they taught him his colors. They taught him his name. They taught him how to sit and just sit. Because trying to get a kid that doesn't know the word sit to sit, Godspeed, um, <laughs> to like take a pen and or a crayon and color. And then they taught him like me. I. So it's not only like speech and vocabulary, but it's put it, it's connecting the words to have meaning. Mm. And for eight hours a day, five days a week on top of OT and speech, 
yeah, his ther his ABA therapist was like my version of God. Like she's she's everything to me. Oh yeah, gosh. she saved I think my child's like future. How That's old incredible. was he when he started the ABA therapy? Two, two, and, and now he's seven. Yes. So how is he today? Today he's phenomenal. He has like assisted classes. He has small group classes just because he works better in a smaller environment. But he's mainstream, so he sits in a room with like twenty two other students. Says the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, and then he goes to his like little math and his little um, English uh, with like four other kids. Originally, I was scared in the beginning of this year. He's in second grade because he like did terrible on this test. But I found out he did terrible because he just didn't want to do it, and he clicked just a bunch of buttons. Just a button. <laughs> he just like kept clicking A, and he just ran through it. And then I was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I didn't know what it was." And like, so, but now he redid the test because it's quarterly, and he is like top ninety three percent of the state. Dang. State. Yeah. Yes. So like I text his therapist every so often. Her sister actually ended up working for me to help. And when I tell you, like, they're so incredible. They're Egyptian. Like we flew to Egypt together last year. Like I wanted to meet and see their culture. I'm just so appreciative of like everything that they did for my son. Oh my God, like true heroes. It's incredible. What is your hope for your son as he continues to get older? Because you mentioned like your therapist saved his future and depending on. I know. truly believe it. Even like because it's such a spectrum. I would love for him to tell his story. I signed on to a I'm a board member of Culture City, which is for sensory needs and sensory issues. And I do it for Grayson. And I would love for Grayson to continue that with Culture City when he's old enough. Uh, as of right now, he doesn't even know what autism is. He doesn't know that he's different. He doesn't know that he had a delay. And, and when he's ready to know, he'll understand that story. The best part about filming those YouTubes, even though I hated YouTube. <laughs> Because I'm so introverted. I'm like, oh, my God, why am I doing this? They're terrible, too. So terrible is that he'll be able to see his growth. His videos were great, but my cooking videos were just violent. Like they were just should never have aired. But he'll be able to see his growth and he'll understand like what at least I did to make his life a little bit better. For me, it's now it's like shooting for the stars. Like for him, with both my children, I just want them to be happy. So whatever they decide to do in life, which I think he'll be quite fine. I actually think my daughter's the one that's going to be <laughs> <laughs> the one that's going to need yeah. mommy. I think whatever he does in life, he's just going to take it and run with it. That's awesome. So, I mean, I guess moral of the story is that, you know, if, if, if a parent finds out their kid is autistic, there's hope and there's things that can so, be done. And a diagnosis isn't a, a sentence. Yeah. I think a lot of people, and I know that, and I know friends in my life that refuse to get their kids evaluated or diagnosed because of the stigma, the sooner the better. Because from what I hear, the brain stops developing at a certain time, and then you can't reverse mm -hmm. it. But up until that time, there are so many things that you can do, especially ABA, speech, OT, to really manipulate the brain in, in a positive way and get them to learn. And fuck the stigma, yeah. like just straight up fuck the stigma. Like I didn't care about the stigma. I didn't care about the diagnosis. Like to me, it's like, if anything, being on the border culture city, I want to make people that have autism or that are on the spectrum, I want them to be treated better. I want, you know, there's a special place for them in this world. Yeah. And it's a great place. Grayson's great. And I know so many other children that are on the spectrum that are awesome and it just sucks that there's like this stigma attached to that old school way of thinking yeah. and that old school parenting i think it's also just like understanding why your brain might work that way my niece is on the spectrum and she's extremely direct yeah. and a lot of people like her classmates or just people in the grocery store or whoever will be like oh my god your kid's rude or yeah. why would she say that to me but she's like she doesn't, she, the way yeah. she works, it's like, I don't, it's, it's like, not being uh, mean. It's duh. just like, it's like yeah. It's yeah. Like, I, was I, just, a little, I was a little bit like that as a kid. Calling it yeah. like it is. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, dating facts. She, uh, we were at the dinner table and my 
her cousin, my other niece, she was like, uh, Lila, you have a booger in your nose. And everyone started laughing and she started, Lila started crying. And she was like, no, I wasn't. I just wanted her to know that she, like, I wasn't trying yeah. to be mean. My sister got her, got the diagnosis and was like, now she can understand that this is what this is. Oh, yeah. That's Grayson all day, too. Yeah. Do you feel like, it's almost like hearing you talk, you talk about the stigma and some of your peers being afraid. And I can't help but wonder your experience in the public eye and like how the show has affected you as a person, I'm assuming on some, some level, has made you incredibly resilient and has made you have that kind of mentality of like, new problem, whatever, let's fucking figure it out, you know? And do you feel like what yeah. you've gone through as, you, as a, you know, a star of Jersey Shore, in a way, helped you deal with your son's diagnosis? For sure. If it wasn't for Jersey Shore, I would never have had the monetary aspect or the way of building a brand to give him the insurance that's needed, which mm -hmm. again is the unfortunate side of a diagnosis like that. My heart breaks for every parent out there that like it's just stuck. Yeah. Like if I was not in the position that I was in and they're like your son's diagnosed, what do I do? And you, you sometimes can't do anything. And I get a ton of messages from those people and that breaks my heart. The resilient side, 100%, but like a bitch would like a break. <laughs> like I can take it on, but like I would like a break. <laughs> yeah. But then again, my daughter is like going pre-puberty right now. So I'm like, I will never get a break. Oh. Yeah, because you're about to enter it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> for you. Look at you two thriving. You are happily engaged. <laughs> I am. <laughs> she's going to, listen, she's going to hate me. I We're going to butt heads. She's going to be obsessed with Nick. Nick's going to like crumble at anything she says. Maybe. But Do you want to see a picture of our daughter? Yes. My daughter's my best friend as much as we butt heads. Really? You okay. might have it. Okay. Okay. I mean, I hope we're best. I remember at like 13, I told my mom I hated her. Oh, it's so, just, yeah. I'm like just waiting. Yeah. It, you know. But again, I think. Our parenting, I don't know how your parents parented, but like, it's just different. Mm -hmm. I feel like, are you Gen Z? Yeah. So Gen Z and millennials, like we get it. Oh. Look at those cheeks. Oh, that's a beautiful, look at the nose. Pouty lips. Pouty. You want to see if you have a picture of me? It's, she's. Our twins? Oh my God. It's like, I did nothing. Here's the theory on that, though. They say they come out looking just like they're dead for prehistoric reasons so that the it's dad knows to claim yeah. that that's my child. But give it like six months to a year. DM me, text me, and you'll be like, she's me. It's me. Yeah. So you have to zoom in. You can't even see her. Nose. Isn't it rude? Like you're carrying her for nine months. Yeah. And, and then she looks she's dead. so annoying. <laughs> and I want. Every time we go to the doctor and get an ultrasound. Nick's like, hmm, wow, she has my lips. Oh, she has my cheeks. So rude. I think she'll have my personality. I'm like, what the fuck is she going to have of me? <laughs> like, <laughs> Obviously, love everything about Natalie. Oh. I love the way she looks. And like, I would, I, the, the, you know what I really don't want? I don't want to be apologizing to my teenage daughter for her not looking like her mother and her looking like me. You know? I've seen some of those. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stunning mom. I don't know what you would look like as a girl, but I'm assuming. I think, fine. I'm fine. Like, fine. But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like passable. I'd passable. Be pa yeah. Passable, but stunning. Is your daughter mom. your twin? Yes. Yeah. <sighs> I'll show you a picture. I didn't bring my it's, phone. Yeah. I really hope so. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll, I'll be. Yeah. Twin personality too. So. Um, yeah. I, I hope. Yeah. I Did you do this when you were pregnant? You obviously like constantly think about what they're going to look like and their personality and like so I gave birth to her on camera. I was so nervous that she was going to come out a little funky cuz babies come Have out you funky. Seen, Natalie prepped me. She showed me some of those TikToks yeah. where the baby's head is like not okay. Wonky. Yeah. So I brought a whole bag of like bows and hats <laughs> and outfits to redirect <laughs> what she yeah, would look yeah. like. And then she came out so beautiful. I was like Oh, okay. We're okay. Yeah. Okay, you can throw those yeah. away. <laughs> like, we don't need that back. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah. they. Yeah, yeah, I packed those too. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't ever take the first glance as like that's end all be all. I'm glad she prepped me because yes. I might have freaked out. Yes. But I'm assuming the nurses would be like, hey, everything's normal. This is normal. No. They don't. They're just like, they just give you your crooked baby. Yep. 
I'm glad that's a trend now because it's it's showing the like what I posted, you know, like what I what I shared of my newborn versus those. what my newborn actually looked like, and it is a lot of you it know is things shocking. are things are funky as they try to make their way out of that tiny hole. Oh, totally. Like, yes. I mean, that makes sense, but I did not know. Nope. Yeah. I am glad I'm yeah. informed. I feel like that's why uh, you're my age. You'll know this one. The movie Coneheads was made. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great movie. I saw that in theaters. I loved that movie. Well, it was all based on. Ba- he has no idea what we're talking about. I know of Coneheads. Oh, I've never okay. seen <laughs> Justin's our sweet boy, we, we, as we refer to him. A sweet boy, Justin. Sweet boy, also, Justin. 2001. I wasn't too far off of Coneheads, right? That I thought it was yeah, like 80s, yeah. 90s. You were pretty far off. Okay, well. Yeah. I know. Of oh, it. wait, you were born in 2001? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. So the God. movie, the, I think that was like an early 90s movie. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, the movie was definitely not 2001. I'm at no. least in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. I got my driver's license when you were birthed. <laughs> that is nuts. Yeah. I loved I loved playing this game with Nick. I'll be like, what were you doing in a, some year? And he'll be yeah. like, oh, I was, you know, in high school or I was doing this. And I'm like... <laughs> This is my Facebook post. And it's like, here I am writing my stupid homework. <laughs> we like Remember back in the day, yeah. Facebook, where it was like, it wasn't like a status. It was it was so much different. Like you're... Facebook, I was MySpace. Oh, well, same. Like where you same. could like rate your friends. Yes. And if you got in a fight with someone, you're like, well, moving them down. Yep. You know, <laughs> like. And then they just disappeared off the top. Disappeared topic. off your top. And then you could have like a board. Like, coding. Coding. I learned coding because of same. MySpace. And I'm, instead of being an accountant and doing my job, I was coding my my MySpace page. Same. I went to school for coding. Really? I had because a, you were so good on MySpace. Yeah, like, did not translate. Go to for this. <laughs> but my dream back then was, and this is why I have a Disney tattoo. I had an obsession with Disney. My dad would take me every other year. He was a single father and who raised me. And I had a dream that I was going to be an animator, and I wanted to <gasps> do computer programming. J Well. What? That was my dream. No way. To be an animator for Disney. I got a drawing board and everything. I'm, I'm pretty good at drawing. Same. Yeah. And that was my dream. Draw off. Draw off. Between no, 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 no. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted, I don't know why. I went one year and, and I saw Brother Bear being made and I told my dad, I was like, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. Wow. So I started with programming and went to NYIT and then my senior year was either I could take an internship to go to Disney or go on a show called The Jersey Shore. And wow. I chose Jersey Shore. And it here worked I out. am now. It worked and out. Really? Are. Animator. I heard it's not that for the weak. And it's not for people like you and me. Because yeah. I know a ton of friends that went. You have a personality. I have one. We love to talk bullshit. You're in those dark rooms for 60 <laughs> to 80 dark, hours. Yeah. yeah nonstop. Well, I think I think we found our path. We did. Yeah. But back to your fiance. <laughs> the wrestler. <laughs> the wrestler. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen any of his moves. I've been waiting till we are on air to see. How did you guys meet? He is a heel. So <gasps> he is. Do you, he babe, is do you know heel. what a heel is? No. The bad guy. The villain. Ooh. The villain. Yeah. Okay. So we actually. Okay, body. I grew up with his sister, but he's. 10 years younger than me. So, <laughs> all right. Cheers to an age gap. Yeah. <laughs> he was my like best friend growing up, little brother yeah. that I did not see like that at right, all. Right, 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 right. And then, oh, so you knew, you knew him as a, no, thank God. Different, okay. different moms, but I knew of him. I okay. knew dad had like of a, all the weird conversations that now they joke around about like what I was doing and what she was doing. It'd been even weirder for oh, you to so like much worse. be yeah. in the no. same room. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Imagine. But like, ugh. <laughs> So one year, I w- my first time taking my daughter to Disney, I knew that he was down in Orlando for because he wants to be at the WWE. And I literally call my best friend. I'm like, I'm so bored. My friends aren't flying in until like the day after. I was like, it's my birthday. I don't want to celebrate my birthday alone. I was like, will your brother come to dinner with me in Epcot? Because like, I'm just, you know, and I knew someone at the WWE at the time. So I was like, I'll invite her. I'll invite him. Like, I feel like I'm like doing like PR and like, you know, she happened to cancel last minute because their headquarters Uh is in Orlando. And he came, which I had no idea. He had to buy like a full ticket. It's like $250 just to walk in. Just and they're literally like, you know, it's closing in 10 minutes, right? He's like, I have to go to dinner at like the the Japanese part of Epcot. 
I'll never forget it because we made a like a name. It was, we had like salmon hibachi together with my daughter, and we were just shooting the shit. And there was nothing like that then. But I was like, it's really good to see like you're grown, moved on your own mm -hmm. in Orlando. And then the next month, I had to go down there for a sensory opening for like a sensory room opening, and they were doing this big thing on how to like, because that's what I advocate for. It's like how to make everything sensory inclusive for children like your cousin and my mm -hmm. son yeah we totally went on a date that time and i was like cool how do we make this work you're in florida and i'm in new jersey and uh we just figured it out and actually that date was the weekend after fab fit fun really yes yeah, swear to god oh my i god. was texting him at fab fit fun because like i look back and i'm like so i'm like in la i know it's like corny or whatever but like I have to fly this weekend to do a sensory opening. Do you want to actually go on an official <gasps> date? Oh my gosh. Cutie. Love that. Uh, and he wants to, you know, be a wrestler at WWE. So here we are. <laughs> uh, so is he still in Orlando or has he? He's been in Jersey. He's yeah. been in Jersey. Okay. He had the option to like renew his lease that end of year or not. And I said, I don't think you should. So we kind of just crash coursed and then COVID hit. So it was like married at first sight, basically. Yeah. 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 You played house. We were, we were a COVID couple. We did the same. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, have you guys announced your wedding date, planned a wedding? Where are we at with that? No, we got engaged during COVID. And coming from someone that's been divorced and like failed at this once, I don't want to fail again. So I'm like really... I don't know. I I know for a fact, and I say this with all my heart, he's, he's my one. He's my one. This guy is so incredible for me. But when it comes to marriage and making it like a government thing, I, it just makes me apprehensive to set a date. I hear you. We'll I don't know. It. Like, And then I look at Goldie Hawn, <laughs> and I'm like, they did it. I don't know. But like, did you set a date? Yeah. Not me trying to avoid the the question we have said it but my dream would be like out of the country too in italy mm -hmm. small now that i we are closing in on the wedding and you know budgets being increased you yes. know it's i definitely feel like i would have been fine with a little courthouse exactly oh, that too <laughs> it's just lavish like, like but, I mean, who was it that I mean, told you know, us we're spending real money it's it's hard, right? I think we've been fairly practical, but practical and weddings don't even exist. That's what I'm saying. Insane. Yeah, and it's such a fucking. That's the other part. And it's, the whole industry, it's like fucking car salesman city. If you go there and you're like, I want to book a sweet sixteen, you'll get the same menu, the same mm -hmm. venue, mm -hmm. the same everything for like a tenth of the yeah. price. Yeah. You say wedding, and they're like, Oh, yeah, like, oh. yeah. Right, so, I'm sorry. Do yes. You to, do you want to come to our wedding? You want to come to our wedding? I got goosebumps. Ah! Really? <laughs> sure. It's gonna be so fun. It's on... what? What's what's two more? <laughs> what's two more? <laughs> no, honestly, it's gonna be. It's just like it's on uh, my family's animal farm in Savannah, Georgia. Oh. And so it's just like a big open. You know, we're it's not like a doing like the a farm. seated dinner. It's just like a big party, and it's like big I just want. We would love for you to come. It would be iconic. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god, I got goosebumps. Okay. That's so you can you can say no off the air, but on the air, no, you can say this is incredible. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. Guys, I'll be busy. But she's also, like, by the way, I'm actually booked that day. I know you didn't tell me when, but I'm booked. I'm obsessed with farms. <laughs> my You'll dream love. is to like have so, a farm where I we just got oh. introvert. Like, I want to live on a farm and just. I can tell you right now, this house, animal. this property is your dream. Jenny, house. we just got miniature cows. Stop miniature. It. They're like the size of like a Dalmatian. Oh. Cute, so Do you cute. Have goats. Yes. Oh my god. I want they a baby goat so goats, bad. sheep, chickens, horses. The Would they consider ate, the bulldog ate the chicken once? R.I.P. Yeah. Chickadee. R.I.P. It happens. Yeah. I heard. That's Ooh. the part of farming I don't know if I can deal with. Every time I talk to my sister, it's a new like. Yes. A wolf ate this animal. Oh, a mm -hmm. eagle picked up this. It's always something. Circle oh, yeah. of life, you know. <laughs> That's Savage true. out there. Uh, Jenny, before we get to texting office hours, 
Uh, you told me something before we started that you happen to be friends with a couple of ladies who may or may not, but absolutely are on the upcoming season of Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yes. Yes. Who and, uh, are these? Is this breaking news? I mean, like, it, it, can well, we learn what about these ladies? Can we learn about these ladies? Like, well, can we stalk their Instagrams? Like, who, what is going on? How do you know these people? I have so many questions. I know a lot of the cast. Like, I know Teresa. I know Melissa. And I know Danielle. And I actually met Danielle through this girl. And the blogs kind of picked it up. But her name is Kayla. She's one of my best friends. And she's going to be on this show, I think. I don't know how they edit. You know sure. how that goes. Yep. But like, like is she going to be a oh, cast member? I don't think she's there yet. I think she's a friend. Okay. I think she's a friend. She's auditioning, maybe. So that's the difference between Jersey Shore and Bravo and Housewives. Housewives, to me, it's like so cutthroat. And it's like if you didn't make an impression, you're gone. Like yeah. if you're not toxic enough. If you're not toxic enough, you're not even going to air. Where it's like with Jersey Shore, it's like you get what you see because this is all we're going to give you. Mm -hmm. So it's like part of me, this is going to be my first time watching a whole season, by the way. I'm super excited for her and Danielle and Melissa and all of them. But I've never really like watched a show. Like as a parent, I'm like, I can't watch every week, but I have to see if my girlfriend ends up on this show. You'll be hooked. I have to. And I... There she, <laughs> Kayla. This but she's Kayla? all over the block. She is. She. They own um, a e clean bro. They just happen to be friends with Danielle, and we actually have producers that like cross over. And even I'm trying to get the details from them. I'm like, you were on Jersey Shore first. Yeah. How dare tell you? Me. They Everyone won't tell me you. anything. Would you ever consider being a housewife? No, I think Andy Cohen hates me. Oh, Why? Why? I don't... <laughs> I want to actually, if I could use this public forum. Do you want to say something to Andy? Yes. <laughs> I want to actually publicly apologize. So something recent happened on like last podcast like that I did where I said something negative about Andy. But it was just like my insecurity of like being nervous going on his Watch What Happens Live because he'll ask crazy questions yeah. that like or as an introvert. Sometimes you don't love. I don't love. Yeah. And it got completely blown up and Andy took his time and he did not have to and he messaged me so apologetically so nice so I want to reciprocate that and say thank you so much and uh I'm sorry that it, I even said that on a podcast because what did you I, say? I said like I, I I'm get really nervous going on watch what happens live because the first thing he asks is like about your looks and about like, what did you get done and this? And I'm oh. just like, oh, why can't it be something like more in depth? And why can't it be something like- No, it's usually clickbaity yes. questions. Yes. You know? And I- They're fan questions. Usually. And you know, I, I went on Joey's podcast mm -hmm. and I it was total vent sesh. But Andy saw that clickbait and he saw that like it hurt my feelings and he really took the time. And this is Andy Cohen. He's massive. He didn't have yeah. to. He really took the time to say like, I'm really sorry for making you feel like that. Yeah, he's, I, I enjoy Andy. I, I, last time I went on Watch What Happens Live to promote my book, I had done Watch What Happens Live so I knew what it was about. And he yeah. definitely made some comments and asked some questions that for me were like uh, a little yeah. frustrating. And then I happened to be in New York like a week later doing some other thing and I ran into him at Sirius. And he like came up to me. I was, and I didn't need it or expect one because like I know the gig. And he was like, "Hey, I'm sorry if I gave you a hard time or blah blah blah." I was like, "Ah, oh, no big deal." I love um, that, and that I know the nice, gig yeah. too. And that's what sucks. I'm like, even sometimes, being as resilient as I claim to be, I can still be like a little insecure twenty five year old oh, walking on the being. show. So, but yeah. Well, like I have I have basher people who come up to me, you know, friends. Just like Nick, man, I just like. I wish I could be more like you. And I'm like, well, oh, thanks. What does that mean? It's like, I just, you don't even care what people think about you. And it's like, no, I do. I'm a human fucking being. The difference between you yeah. and I is I don't fucking look. Yeah. You know, it's not that I don't care. It's just that I know how to like, I, yeah. I can see the big picture. But yeah. He, uh, so yeah, that was it. But I'm really excited for this Well, it doesn't sound season. like he hates you. It sounds like he really respects no. and appreciates, you know? I like think he would hate having us on his show. That's for sure. <laughs> I would hate having me on his show, too. <laughs> I feel we like do give a hard time. You know what would be great, Housewives? I'm not catty enough. Yeah. Yeah, you, you do really have to. You really have to. Yeah. You have to make when you're the not, smallest of things the biggest so of fucking yeah. deal. And I, I go to like zero to 100 so quickly. Like, I'm just like, I'll be quiet, 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 quiet. And then, you know, something would erupt. 
but like to me, I'm not catty enough. Like I can't sit there and just go, bit, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. But that's so what makes it. that franchise so great. That's true. I love it. I love the girls on it. We love it. I'm new to it and I'm, I'm, yeah. in, I'm into it. I'm a big fan. Did you pay attention to Scandaval at all? Very little. And it's so crazy to me. And I'm going to get so much shit for this. But like, I'm like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> I, only because, and I come from Jersey Shore, Ron and Sam. It was insane. Yeah. I've seen some shit yeah. on TV. And I've seen some terrible cheating and lying and horrible things. And I'm like, this is like pretty standard. <laughs> this is normal. This is normal. I, I, I get what you're saying. No, like, I, I get, no. it's like. All right. Has anyone seen what Ron and Sam did? Like, cheat, you know, and, and it's like, and I heard there were other like cheating things that happened on that show. Oh my God. No, like th that's the truth. And I know this because I've gone back and watched old episodes. Yes. Now. But I'm what, like, why this what Tom one? did to Ariana is just, if, if, at, if nothing else, par for the course. That's what I was going to say, par for the course. So, like, the, um, how it blew up, I was like, holy uh, shit. I think it was just a perfect storm. You know, I agree. And then I think with Tom, a lot of the shit he has gotten is just how he has handled yes. the fallout. He and needed like a crisis PR and he didn't have it because he handled it so like, I don't know, corny, yeah. I guess. She handled it with grace. She took on these like beautiful endorsements, which I was like, yeah, girl power, like, mm -hmm. you know, own him at the end of the day. Like, but to me that the. the perfect storm of it all was very confusing coming from reality tv it's so funny what can get like thrown out there into the media that makes like everything go, everyone go wild right and what will happen 10 times on that show and the ratings are you know it's nuts yeah. Flat, yeah. yeah and i and i know like i came off a little harsh with that but to me i was just like that like but and, and i kind of feel bad for that girl rachel yeah like, I think she just got mowed over and also being on the in the public eye and you don't know all the stories and you don't know all the sides. Mm -hmm. And she just looked very in, and I watched the reunions and I watched her little snippet at the end. I just felt like, man, like, no, has anyone given her a hug and being like, you're going to get through this? Or, you know what I mean? Like, are yeah, you I like, so. <laughs> like, I definitely think she ha deserves a chance for of redemption. Yeah. I don't love what she's doing now like now oh, so i don't know right now i mean she's got her she's basically started a podcast telling her side of the story and it's oh see, see that's and where it's I'm like going i, I want to be yeah. out of the limelight and then it's and it's a lot of now it's all tom's fault my truth yeah yeah, yeah. and it's so i want to move on but, but i'm trying to make some money <laughs> yeah no yeah. see that's where i like yeah that's and, when i fall at this year like, but i do done. think more than anything she deserves it you know like well they they ran with it they're Tom. not the only people who like you said i mean it's like, it's just so weird how that was a perfect storm yeah. and just coming from the same business. I'm just like, you know, and I would tell my production company, they're going to kill me for this one. But I'd be like, we had our scandal and you chose not to. Yeah. <laughs> Play oh, it the way yeah. Yeah. you didn't lean in. You didn't <laughs> lean in. I was like, this, see the difference between us and Bravo? <laughs> like, you should have, we could have made something out of it. Uh, well, Jenny, this has been so much fun. So much. We're not, Thank we're not you. done yet, but it is time to help someone else out with their relationship problems. Through the lens that we've all made our own mistakes. I, yeah. And we're just here to pass on. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then when we come back from texting out of his hours, uh, we got a little uh, exclusive tea from uh, Jenny slash JWoww herself. Oh my. Woo! So stay I'm tuned. Nervous. And uh, then we'll wrap. All right. Let's get to texting office hours. Helix sleep. If you're not sleeping on a Helix mattress, then what the heck are you doing? I, I can't say it enough. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. It's the greatest mass mattress of all time. It's presidents should be sleeping on it. Kings, queens should be sleeping on it. You can't make a more comfortable mattress. It's that simple because it's truly the most comfortable mattress in the world. It's also incredibly affordable. It's easy to get. It's fun to open up. They're, it's truly, truly a special, special mattress. Every night I get into bed, it's a magical moment. They have a mattress for everyone. Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, their newly released Helix Elite Collection. Nellie and I are sleeping on the Moonlight mattress, for, uh, if you care. doesn't matter if you're a back sleeper, side sleeper, you sleep hot, you sleep cold, large or small. Helix has something for everyone. You just go to helixsleep.com. You uh, fill out a quick quiz, you know, how do you sleep, what are your preferences, and they will let you know the mattress that is right for you. And then you get a 100-night sleep trial. You get to use it for 100 nights. 
Uh, and if you don't want, uh, after 100 nights, you just send it back. All their mattresses come with a 10 to 15 year warranty, depending on the mattress. Uh, you're going to love it. Uh, you won't need 100 nights, but you can use it if you want. And uh, it's truly, truly magical. And you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, Helix Sleep was awarded number one mattress uh, by GQ and Wired magazine. It's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. It's improved mine, and it can improve yours, too. Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders and a free bedroom bundle for our listeners in honor of President's Day. The bundles include two free pillows, as well as a set of sheets and even a mattress protector. Go to helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code HELIXPARTNER25. This is the best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Do you guys like burning money, wasting money? I don't think so. No one likes doing it, but yet so many of you are. I know it's true because the world is spending money on apps they don't use. Everyone's doing it. I did it. I, whew, I was wasting thousands of dollars a year until I discovered Rocket Money. That's right. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills. They will literally negotiate lowering your bills for you. It seems too good to be true, but it's not. You can see all your subscriptions in one place. And if you see something you don't want, you can cancel it with a tap. You don't even have to call customer service or anything like that. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasting money and negotiate lowering your bills for up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members on average $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Myself saved over $1,000, but that's just me. M M wasteful Nick. Don't be wasteful anymore. Let Rocket Money help you save money, lower your bills, and just help you manage your be money better just in general. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. -L. That's rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. -L. How's it going? Hi, uh, my name is Maddie and I'm 29 and I have a friend that has become a little weirdly obsessed with me, and now I don't know how to get out of it. Is it a guy friend? No, it is a girl. Obsessed with oh. you how? It's hard to explain. Like Always romantically? checking in on me. Do you think? Having a comment about everything I post on social media, texting me all the time, like above a normal level that you would text a good friend. And I kind of didn't even really think we were best friends. So, so yeah. you're a little overwhelmed. By how much this yeah, friend wants like, to be your friend. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like a little barraged by the amount of communication and intensity of it. For do you sure. think it's more just an obsession because you're like so cool? Or do you feel like maybe there's romantic elements at play here? I don't think it's that. She is married. Okay. She's newly married. And... She's kind of had some personal things with health issues happening lately, and he has not been around. He's out of town a lot, not super present. So okay. I think maybe it's like... Do you think that's why she's reaching out to you for a friend? I, kind of me trying to be her husband in that situation, I guess. Like, she needs more her. support or help. Well, first, how are how did y'all become friends? Like, what? Yeah. You know, how did y'all meet? What is your origin? So, yeah, we both moved to the area we're in a couple years ago, and... Both were just kind of looking for some good girlfriends. We didn't know a lot of people in the area. And we met at church, just pretty casual, and then got brunch a couple times. And I thought we were pretty good friends. And then she just did a couple of things that kind of showed me that we weren't. So Such as? She talked to me about her wedding all the time, but then didn't invite me. But then invited hmm. some other girls that I know are like kind of our same level of friendship. She also bought a house without talking to me and I'm a real estate agent full time. So that was kind of weird. So those are two things that were basically like, we're not that good of friends, which I was fine with. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that she's coming around maybe because she feels guilty for those things? I don't think so. We've never addressed them. I just kind of was like, OK, I guess we're not that good of friends. So I started treating the friendship like that. But then it took this turn of her treating the friendship as if we're like the one of the closest you know i'm the closest friend she's ever had so when did this start how long has she been blowing you up started probably about a month ago it was very normal level of communication up until then and then it was like they have a screenshot but multiple days in a row how are you doing checking in do you have any like plans for the holidays like just over and over without me even responding and on top of that 
I could not post a thing on like my Instagram story without getting some sort of response. Hmm. And like my best friends, my mom don't even respond to me that much. So it was like, can I just live my life? I had just got engaged too. So she's like pummeling me with all this while I'm like trying to enjoy this. So Uh, you sent in some text, text from her, I'm assuming that you have not answered. (laughs) Yeah, they're all on answers. Are like, you, can... you like... introverted? For... Because <laughs> yeah. I get very overwhelmed when people text me back um, to back. I definitely am, but I do have close friends that I talk to on a regular basis. But I mean, you know, I think we all have an understanding of like we're adults. We have stuff going on. Like we'll talk when we talk, but it it feels like she's demanding more than that. Like she needs every day back and forth communication with me, which I cannot. Did you get. go to her birthday party? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> okay. This so a lot of these texts are from December. Is this continuing? Yeah. So I kind of was able to stave her off because of my engagement. I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm busy, whatever. But she's asked me like three times now to get together. And I just that's kind of where I'm at as I'm blowing her off every time. And I don't know how much longer I can do that. Do you so. want to be friends with her at all? Do you it hold... sounds terrible, but no. not really. No. Like, and have... is that because you just don't vibe with her personality, or are you a little annoyed about the real estate transaction? I would say it's all of those things. Like, I think a, all of my really good friends have worked with me. Like, they support my business. And then I would say the second thing is like, yeah, you kind of made it weird. Like, I think I kind of just got annoyed, mm-hmm. and like we're clearly not vibing. I guess, and then. There were a couple of other things, too, throughout the relationship that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, I guess. Like, she had just gotten married to a guy that she had only dated for a couple months, which is fine. But then she was kind of, like, trying to be the authority on marriage to me. And I've been dating this guy I just got engaged to for, like, four years. So it was, like, it was annoying. Mm. (laughs) You're just not on the same wavelength, it looks like. But are you scared of, like, just completely removing her from the yeah. friendship. That's the thing. It's like, yeah. what's what's stopping you from just kind of cutting her phasing off, phasing this off? Yeah. yeah, and just kind of not responding, and eventually she'll get the point. And I not guess like it's you. like I, that's what I've been doing, and it's not working. Or being upfront with her and just being like, "Hey, loved what we had as a friendship, but right now I'm just in a different place, and I'm just going to take some time for myself. Yeah, I mean, like I do don't that. have the mental capacity for this yeah. friendship that it." would deserve yeah you know so. yeah Sorry. i guess i feel bad doing that like is there a good way to say that my strategy so know. far has been to just keep blowing her off and just hope kidding. she gets the point but she does not get the point should we read the messages yeah. and just it's just it's just a one-sided message i don't so. think they're sexual in no. nature not at no. all no. Not not at there's all. like not a at all. she's just persistent yeah yeah and they're very much like day after day after yeah. day thinking yeah. same about, day yeah <laughs> Thinking about you, anything new with you? How are you? Sorry for the late text. 11, 11, 11 p.m. PM. Uh, no response. How are you? What are your Christmas plans? Love and miss you. No response. Are you around January 12th? I'm having a small 90s themed 30th birthday party. You and your man are invited. No response. No response. And so I'm assuming you also didn't wish her happy birthday. <laughs> I'm. You nice wished her happy now. birthday? You ruined I felt it. Like she would say, I felt like she would say, Oh, what did I do? Are you mad at me? What's going on? And yes. then I didn't. After like 10 unanswered texts, I kind of was like, thanks for the congratulations and like happy birthday. Well, then she did text me like three more times asking me if I was going to go mm. to the party and I ignored those. And then she texted me about three more times asking me to get oh. together. So excuse me if you already mentioned this, but are you two from like a very small town? Are you afraid of like small, small, but it's not big. Like, are you afraid of like yeah. friends judging or the inner circle or like cross friends, you know, mutual friends? There's a couple mutual friends. Um, there's a couple mutual friends. Have you spoken with not, the mutuals about how you're feeling about this? I'm not ve- that close with them. Okay. So you're not close with them. We're so, like associates. No, not- so I, I don't really care, I guess, if she were to say anything bad about me, I guess. But well, the only thing I think this story is requiring is follow through on you. Yeah. on your part you know like you broke the Maybe. seal yeah. so to speak it was her birthday she invited you to the birthday party you're trying to cut off communication and then you wished her a happy birthday and then you responded to the engagement and like had you not done that mm. she might have been like this fucking chick didn't even wish me happy birthday we're clearly not friends 
Yeah. But you just kind of give off the moment. vibe as my life's a bit of a whirlwind right now. I'm a little busy. I'm not trying to be rude. So I will acknowledge your birthday. I will acknowledge your message. I just don't have time. And yeah, you can get mad at me for being a little like just preoccupied. Breadcrumbs. But you're not saying I don't want to be your friend. Yeah. You're right. I have been breadcrumbing her. I yeah. will admit it. Yeah. yeah. So this, listen, this is, like, yeah. This Unfortunately, is, we think it's on you. To yeah. to disconnect that, you know, yeah, to, and to it's, make the true disconnect. Yeah. Do you think it's a just a total ghosting, or do you think I need to say, in some nice way, this isn't working for me? <laughs> well, how long have like what is the relationship? Like, yeah. how many times have you hung out? Like I said, like I thought we were actually pretty decent friends. Like I think you know we would talk every once in a while. We would get brunch here or there. I thought we were good enough friends to be invited to her wedding. I will say that. And then that didn't happen. Did that hurt? Yeah. It seems like that annoyed the fuck out of you. Did that hurt you? Yeah. I think it did. I think then that followed by the real estate thing, which I'll say like we had a direct conversation where she was like, oh, buying a house is so hard. Like it's, you know, I can't figure this out. And I was like, well, you know, that's my whole profession, right? Like I do that full time as my job. Like I feel like it would be like someone saying to you, Nick, oh, I just have no idea how to start a podcast. Like while you're sitting right there, it's like, hello. <laughs> so I said that to her. And then she was like, oh, yeah. And then just never said anything about it again. And oh, so you were like, I can out. do this. And she was like, uh, yeah. Found someone else. She was, in, she was inconvenienced by your offer of help. Yes. Yeah. And then she didn't even buy a house with like another realtor that's like a friend or a family member that she knows. She bought it through one of those like cheesy new oh. build salespeople. So it was like, if, All right, neither, so here you go. if neither of those things would have happened, she, I see, obviously you got engaged. She saw it via Facebook. Would you have told her that you got engaged, that he proposed before it was posted? Like, w- were you all that close where you're like, I need to personally tell her or she can see it on social media? Maybe before she got so like incessant with the text and okay. the social media contact I might have, but that like turned me off so bad because it was so much in such yeah. a short period of time. I have your answer now that I have all okay. the information. <laughs> Ghosting, total option, I think, fine. You know, you've already been trying. So like, um, yeah, I don't think it's the end of the world. You know me, I'm, I'm more for communication. Same. I think that's thing. because we're old. You know, <laughs> that's what like, I was like, I think he's going to tell me to be direct, but I do have a piece of information that may add to the strategy. Okay. I'm oh. getting married at the end of the year and I'm moving across the country. So fuck it's this, not like this, this relationship would maybe last anyways. <laughs> she said, bye yeah. girl. Honestly, fuck yeah. this. No, listen, like, you don't have to be friends with people you don't want to be friends yeah. with. It's just about, the, the question is yeah. how you handle this, yeah. right? You've already been kind of, I don't think it, ghost, like this isn't even real ghosting. This is just more like, I mean, we're not friends. It's, like, it's fine. And so you not responding, I don't think is the end of the world. It's not the most True. upfront form of communication. Yeah. But if you want to do the upfront form of communication, I know exactly what you should say. So one of two things are going to happen. You're going to keep not responding to her or reach out to her. She'll either get the point and stop, or at some point she is going to ask you, what's up? To which you reply at that point and it's like, hey, can I be honest? I'm honestly a little bit confused about our friendship. And just keep it real with her. Tell her the truth. I thought we were pretty close, but like then you you didn't invite me to your your wedding. No problem. You didn't seem to value me as a resource when you bought a house. Again, no problem. But that definitely made me reconsider how close we were. That's the truth. And ever since then, I've just been a little confused by how much you've been reaching out to me because I've been under the impression, quite frankly... We weren't that close. And so I, that's how I've been operating. And I guess I just didn't realize that we were. So I am confused by your reaching out. Just act confused. There is no better okay. way of communication and like, than, being like, than playing dumb. And it might also be therapeutic for you. You might get the answers that you want or need as to why she didn't hire you, as to why you weren't invited. Maybe this is her way of feeling that's guilty. So true. That she is doubling down on the text because she also feels that guilt. So it might be great closure on both ends by having that communication and telling why you're upset and how overwhelmed you are with your, these texts all of a sudden out of nowhere and why you haven't been so receptive of them. Yeah, my guess is her activity is a result of you not responding. 100%. And while you handle it one way, she's panicking. 
it's like that anxious attachment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like she's yes. probably having yeah. anxiety over you not responding. Yeah. And then the few times you reached out and said, happy birthday. She's like, oh my God, she doesn't hate me. Thank we're God. Okay, serotonin we're fine. Yeah. through the roof. And then you post on social media. She's like, she's on her phone. I need oh, to text yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's also been just weird. Like also some messages, like unwarranted dumping of heavy things, I guess, on me too. So like, yeah. that's an aspect that I'm like, once again, I thought we weren't that good of friends. Like, why am I the person that this is being put on? It's odd. So I mean, who knows? But you're both poor communicators is what I've yeah. come to learn. That's, that's, um, I, I, I won't <laughs> deny that. Yeah. I feel like everyone I ask my fiance, you're a good friend. They're like, I have no idea what to tell you. Like, so I had to ask I guarantee you. it'll be a lot easier when you do it. Yeah. Then you think all this like That's anticipation true. and worry is like just being worried for all these reasons, which I get. I know that feeling. But once you execute it, you're probably gonna be like, oh, wow, it was just that easy. And if you ever send her that message via text, because I'm assuming it'll be via text, reread that message before you send it. Have your husband read it and say, do I sound confused or mad? Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah, because you want to sound confused. Because that is the truth. It says, I'm just confused. I didn't like I, I girl, honestly, like I just you don't want to come off defensive. Yeah. You're just like, I don't I I'm a little confused because I just thought based off of how things went down that we just weren't that close, which and I'm not mad. I, I just didn't realize. So I'm confused as to why we're in this spot is basically yeah it's like we're all of a sudden close again when she really needs it yeah. i guess is what it's felt like too or she's doing it from guilt you might yeah. you might be reciprocating that as negative because she's going through health issues but she actually might be doing it solely because she feels guilty for not inviting you and having you help with the house yeah and sometimes you become friends with people and they're like that the interim with your wedding it's just like you know I'm sure you're I mean, going through that. I mean, we just invited Jenny 12, 12 hours ago, <laughs> Jay Wild wasn't coming to our wedding. And now we're like, you know, maid of honor. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, I'm uh, trying to play my guest list too. And it's a real yeah. part. It so I get it. But it's weird when someone talks to you constantly about their wedding and all the plans and the details oh, of it. Yeah, then does that's it? weird. Yeah. yeah but weird. again, who, who knows? Right. And you clearly don't. And then the friend thing, not hiring you. Again, I'm not making excuses, but like for the same person who didn't invite you to her wedding to her wedding is just like, uh, I don't want to mix business with friendship. There may could have been a little bit of that, you know, maybe yeah, she fair. just didn't want to fuck with that, you know, and just that's super fair. That's valid. But obviously it bothered you and you, your way of handling it was being like, hey, I guess we're not that close, which was also valid. So again, just act confused. And I think the truth will okay. reveal itself. And like you said, you are moving. This is more about you practicing healthier communication than than fixing this friendship. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I'm definitely more of an avoider. I'm not good with yeah. confrontation. So, uh, and I just don't want to hurt her feelings. She is going through some tough things right now. Um, so I think that's part of it too. Your opinion of her, I, can, I will tell you, is based off a lot of assumptions. Yes. And so you don't really know certain, she's done some things that rightfully and understandably have annoyed you. And you've made a, a bunch of assumptions off of that. Yeah. You're and not also, wrong. <laughs> I don't think you, I think your text to her, if you do sound confused, it won't, she won't take it as like you being mean or she won't like. I Based don't, on these, no. <laughs> She'll be happy she texts her. <laughs> yeah, truly. She'll be happy she <laughs> yeah. got a response. Probably. <laughs> yeah. And you can be like, yeah, I guess, you know, it's in downplay it, but I guess I just, I really thought, you know, we weren't that close of friends just because. What if she then takes that as, well, I think we are like, I'd love to be your really close friend. Where do I go from there? Set boundaries and say, hey, but I'm moving. Gotta yeah. Go. Yeah. Be like, okay. yeah, just be like, obviously, I think you're great. You and give her some bullshit. But like life's <laughs> like my life's really just chaotic. Bit, hey, chaotic right now. And we are moving. So like maybe in the future. But like right now, I just don't have time. This is just a friendship. Yeah. I can't make a priority right now. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way of saying it. And yeah. the moving does help a yeah. lot. And planning it, a wedding, and, you know, like you're just yeah. like getting over me when I move will be too hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's best we pull it now. But yeah, I do think just from your own personal standpoint, I would work on making a bunch of assumptions off of people disappointing you. Yeah. And I mean, I think I'm what you said, though, is like I was fine with her doing those things. It just to me defined yeah, totally. the friendship. Oh, I, I totally I get where you're at. With. Yeah. 
But then it was weird to me that when it like switched back to what I originally thought, it just felt like it was because I, I was confused. Yeah. I was like, wait, I thought we weren't that close. So what's going on now? You know, but so, even if we were super close friends, the communication level was still too yeah. much. for yeah. me. She's not so. a good communicator either. Right. Because yeah. she could have reached out and said, hey, I know we haven't been as close or whatever, but like I'd love, you know, and maybe she it was she lacked the ability to be vulnerable. Like Maybe she lost some friends. I don't know. Maybe some shit happened. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. But instead of just like being vulnerable to you, she just like per her approach was like, I'm just going to pretend we're best friends yeah. and <laughs> see what happens. And that, you know, was yeah. weird, too. So, yeah, I think it would have went better if she just said, hey, I need a friend right now. Can we oh my God. chat or yeah. get, get together? You would have totally what jumped on that because who says no to like i need a friend it's like, oh girl what anyone who's like vulnerable it's like it's so much easier yeah. to step up but when someone like comes full court press oh my god tell me i you must tell me everything it's so weird when people say shit like that but that in a casuals. deflecting manner yeah. everything that she's texting is just like deflecting the fact that she did not invite you <laughs> and you are not her real estate agent yeah. <laughs> but hey yeah, girl she, how's yeah. christmas love What's your you plans? Yes. What was the commission she that you like could so have gotten? seems like so invested in my Ooh, life yeah. and my upcoming marriage, but uh, I'm just, well, why? You know, it's it's confusing. doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's also where I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to, I do want to just avoid it and not deal with it, but. You can do I that. I'm almost 30, so I gotta. I think this is good practice for you. It is, yeah. yeah. If you knew more about me and my personality too, you would know this definitely is. Oh, like I, can, it's, I can sense it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I figured it out already. <laughs> You're about to get married. You're going to need to be, you know, communicative with your husband. You know, yeah. shit's going to happen. This won't be the last time you have miscommunications with friends, family, and mm -hmm. avoiding conversations and making a bunch of assumptions is not a recipe for lack of drama. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I think I feel good about this. All right. Well, keep us posted. Be, good luck. Love yeah, a good I update. Will. Yeah. Where are you moving to? New I don't York need your City. attitude. Oh, no, this, oh. oh yeah, have fun. Jealous. You need a lot of communication there. Yeah. So this is good <laughs> practice. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're yeah. right. People they are very direct there. Yes. there. Yeah. You will know where you stand in that city. Yes. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you for the phone call. Hopefully this was helpful. Yeah, it was super helpful. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye. So, Jenny, you making movies? Holy shit. <laughs> You're the first person I'm telling publicly. <gasps> I have to give you a little bit of a backstory. Please. Because this is embarrassing. Again, my introverted like little girl side is just, I'm screaming right now. I'm ready oh to walk God. out. Before COVID, I don't even know how to begin this. Before COVID, I was born, I was, I was my dad's my best friend. My dad raised me. I heard your single family home. Mm -hmm. my, Mom, yeah. Yeah. So my dad raised me, only child, single family home. And like, we have the best relationship. And I at, oh my God, I was like 36 years old. And I'm like, dad, like, what am I going to be when I grow up? Because you know, as well as I do, like, you never think that this has like a future, right? right. And like, what am I going to be when I grow up? Damn near 40. And it's just like trying to figure it out. And we started talking about the things that I loved and Disney and all these other things that I loved as a kid. And it went back to when I was my daughter's age. My dad had a, I don't know if you know, but do you know beta tapes before mm -hmm. VHS? Yeah, I, I right know. <laughs> Okay. Uh, VHS or beta. Actually, there's a great band called VHS or beta. Make great music. So before Anyways. VHS, there were these tapes that were smaller, which actually looked more convenient yeah. than VHS, which do you even know what that is? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> which, so I had a walk-in attic in my bedroom and my dad left his beta player because at the time we were hip with VHS okay. and all his old beta movies and they were all horror movies. So growing up, I used to like connect the you know, little HDMI or whatever it was back then into the my TV and watch all the old school horror movies. And I, I became obsessed and low key terrified and kept myself up at night for hours, but like obsessed with horror movies up until high school, into graduate school and into the Jersey Shore. I am I have this obsession with horror movies. So my dad's like, you know, the one thing throughout your whole life that has stayed pretty consistent is your love for movies and wanting to work 
in movies and make them and work at Disney, but they don't make horror movies. But he goes, your love for horror movies is like insane. Why don't you try something like that? So I then talked to my lawyer because I'm afraid to use any of my money, right? I'm very conservative. I'm trying to save it all, especially at the time. I didn't know if my kids were going to be growing up to be normal human beings. You never know <laughs> the, the worlds we live in. So I'm like, I always save. So my lawyer was like, listen, I spend $60,000 a year on golfing and I see no return, but the return I see is happiness. So put a number on it. Figure out a number that you're okay seeing no return on and that brings you joy. So I put a number on it and the February before COVID, two weeks before COVID, I went to an asylum with my friends and I scouted a location and I said, I'm going to fuck around and make a horror movie here. And as I signed the documents to do so, two weeks later, COVID hit and I actually used all of Jersey Shore's protocols which are phenomenal, I would say, during uh, COVID with their testing and their, you know, 72 hours of like not going out. And I hired five actors and I hired my production company that I worked on YouTube with. And I fucked around and made a horror movie at an asylum. Hell yeah. And it just got edited last week. <sighs> it was on hold. No. I, I held it. Because again, I'm, I'm very, I don't even know if it's introverted. I'm very scared of transition. And I don't know if you were ever scared. I wanted to talk to you about that, doing the podcast of failing because you never know, right? Yeah. So I'm, that's like a part of me, like I'm very scared of failing. And, and I will say this part of the industry is different and not kind. Like it's very hard to break into yes. uh movie side. So I made my first horror movie. It's an indie, low budget. I just completed it. And I would love to go to um, Paramount, that's MTV, who I have not gotten the email yet, but this is my shout out to Paramount to return my call and pitch it to Paramount. And I'm actually also currently working on my second one. Love that. Oh my yes, gosh. and I'm so nervous right now, and I'm like squeezing my hands together because again, I'm I'm scared for change. But when I tell you, and and my dad called me after I wrapped, it was very you know like a couple of weeks, and he goes, "So how was it?" And I said, "It was everything and more that I wanted," because there's a difference between watching him and making them. Yeah, and I could have failed, and I could have did it miserably. And I'm telling you, it's low budget; it's nothing like extraordinary. But I paid it out of my own bank account. I didn't ask for anyone's help. I didn't get tax credits. I didn't do the things that people do to try. I literally just cut the checks myself. I did it. And I said, if this never sees the light of day, I'm okay with it. But I just need to know that I like it and I want to do this. And when I tell you 18 hour day turnarounds, no sleep, I cried at the end because I didn't want it to be over. Like, I was like, this was the best experience that I ever made. Also scary as hell, by the way, a real asylum. So That's have incredible. you, wa it's, it's edited, have you watched it? Uh, I started watching it on the way here. And um, it's, so it's like color corrected, the audio. And, and another thing, like I said, it's so hard to find, it's so hard to transition because I work in the world of reality and trying to find like real movie editors and color correctors and things of that nature are so incredibly mm -hmm. hard to like, you know, look for uh, on that side of, of uh, this industry, but I finally did. And I'm, I'm so proud of my small indie project and I'm so proud that I'm going to start pitching it and you're the first to know. You should be, that's amazing. That's incredible, I love that. Thanks, and I don't know where it'll go from here, but uh, you Well, I think, uh, I think it really just comes down to your follow through. I mean, the fact that what you yeah. did, like most people don't have the guts to start what you did, and you first started it, and the first thing that happened was adversity, COVID, <sighs> you know? And most Brutal. people in your position would have just been like, you know what, it's not in the cards, it's not meant to be. You know, people love to use the, it's not meant to be as an excuse not to yeah. follow their dreams or whatever, uh, but you did. And mm -hmm. I don't think you're as afraid as failure as much as you say you are. I mean, I think, you know, getting to know you sitting here, I think we, are per we have a lot of in common with our personalities. I think like, I won't accept failure. That's, that's yeah, it. like yeah. for me, it's just more like when I started the show, I had other friends in the business and had successful podcasts. And it was more like, I'm not doing this until I know exactly what I want it to be. Cause I know I want it to be successful and I want to do it right. And cause when I, when I do do it, I know I'm going to go balls to the walls and I'm going to fucking like- That's how I feel. You know, and so 
the fact that you made a movie just on your own is an incredible yeah. feat because like most people don't even can't even comprehend everything that goes into it and and you have no idea and doing it on and every day i'm sure song. there's a new problem that oh. you're solving I was everything. People make fun of me now. And the second movie that I'm doing is much grander and better. But I was the director, the writer, the producer. I was the person getting the food. I was the person like running notes. Yeah. I was from the PA to the top because there was only like seven of us on set. And um, yeah, but it, it made me appreciate every person's perspective. And who and wrote the script? Me. You wrote the script? Me. You, did you direct it? Yeah. I did it all. I you wanted did it all. She, I did she it all. got the Duncan. She got coffee. I did. She I got, got the... she got everything. <laughs> she did everything. That's incredible. I did because I didn't know, like I said, coming from reality, I knew how to make a movie the way that I knew how to make reality TV. So my movie is very similar to like a reality TV based horror film, like found footage in an asylum. I rigged the asylum the same way you rig a reality house. I had Cam hidden cameras yep, everywhere. Yeah. I had things done precisely the same way I learned in reality. I had sound people from reality, cameramen from reality, like, and I I created it the way that I knew I could create it. The second one that I'm now like getting a real budget and real, you know, people is different. But this one's to me is more important because it's my baby. Mm -hmm. Might not be the best. It definitely isn't going to be the best, but it's something that gave me growth in, in, in such a way that I never thought I could grow. And you loved doing it. Oh, I love when I tell you I'm thriving in this. This is this is my thing. This is my new Disney. It's just it's something. And it, this is why I said before, like, I kind of like my messed up brain. Like, I don't want to fix it because I love fixing it in horror movies. I take like my biggest fears mm -hmm. and I put it into a movie. I think you will be successful. I don't Thanks. know. Maybe you'll You're win an the... Oscar. Maybe you won't. I don't know. But like the fact that you, A, you have incredible follow through, determination, and you love doing it. It's hard. As hard as that business is, it, it's hard not to be successful when you have those traits. Yeah. Most people just don't there. have them. That's... The passion is there. Um, so yeah, you're the first to know. I don't even think all my roommates know. <gasps> That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I can't I'm wait so to see it. also because I was nervous. I hey, Paramount. <laughs> so... Wait the fuck Paramount. Out. Could, yeah, like, come on now, come on. please. I mean, what? let's... Even the, just the fact that you have this relationship with Jenny, j -Well, MTV, the crossover. Uh, like, that's what I'm it's saying. iconic. Yeah. yeah. So I want to pitch to them. So. Well, congratulations on that. But that's when I send the trailer, you'll be the first one, I promise. I'll give it to you. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll post for it. Not even that, just yeah. to see it, just to see what like my little passion project brought. I can't wait to I see, it. see it. What nice. if we play it at Nick and Natalie's wedding reception Stop. as a fun um, little wait, we <laughs> should. presentation? Yes. I don't want you guys to think that you're... Entering is a blissful time, not the time for a <laughs> for horror, horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> but the after party. Okay. Uh, I love stories like that. It's, it's great. Awesome, the the yeah. follow through is amazing. Yeah. It will absolutely be successful. It's just a matter of your patience. Yeah. And uh, since 2020, I've been very patient. So, yeah, I think it's time. I, if there was anything that I could gain coming here that, like I said, to choose, it would be admitting my little project on the side that um gave me so much joy that's incredible good for thanks. you thanks i'm blushing yeah. and i never blush I, i'm like feel like i'm red right now no we're <laughs> so happy for you that's amazing you're gonna win a, a, an award someday someday you know maybe the vile files will have an award ceremony every year and i'll be up for one no I, you actually might win a w real one no like, i don't you never i don't know. even don't think that big know. you never know my biggest thing you have to love it you have to love what you yeah. do that's why i said to my children you have to love it and this and i don't get me wrong i like and i love reality tv but this is different if i could be behind the camera for the rest of my life i would be very happy it takes a lot of guts to do what you did thank you yeah and a lot of money out of my savings <laughs> yeah. account. Well, also guts, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jenny, this has been so much fun. So much. Um, I feel like we ran out of time an hour ago. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> but it's always great okay. when we have a guest and it just flies by. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for coming. It's been such a joy. Thank you. Uh, the next time I see you, we'll be at your well, wedding. Yeah. I know. We'll have a little baby. You can't You can't take that back, by the way. I'm invited. No, so. Oh, no, yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll send you an invitation. Yeah, we don't fuck around. They yeah. don't fuck around. <laughs> Good luck on the upcoming season. Thank you. Wish you nothing but the best on yes. that and in life. 
I mean, not that people don't know where to find you, but you want to plug all your socials and all that fun stuff? Oh, yeah. At JWOW, J-W-O-W-W. Where did that come from? Uh, so when I worked in the Long Island nightclub scene mm -hmm. way back before I got hired, um, a guy would yell wow every time I would walk by. And then I started working for the nightclubs and creating their flyers and being bottle service and all that. And they're like, you need a nickname. And they're like, well, we call you wow. So let's do Jenny wow. And then it slowly started just becoming J Wow because everyone got lazy. It's a great nickname. That is a good it nickname. Is. That is. Shout out to Summer John for helping Summer me. Summer John. <laughs> Man, Summer John. We love you. <laughs> we love an iconic nickname. Uh, thank you again. It's no, been so much thank fun. Thank you too. Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at the com for all things texting office hours, mediation. You know the drill. Subscribe, tell your friends. If you're tuning in to Jenny, slash jwell for the first time stick around listen to all our other episodes we have a lot of them until next time we'll see you later and see you back on monday bye Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.